All right. Good evening, folks. This is the meeting of the Rutland Town Select Board for Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. It is 6 p.m. We have a full complement of board members here. Kurt Hathaway, Joe DiNardo, Mary Ashcroft, Matt Getty, and Sharon Russell. So let's get started. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> That's a very difficult um, anthem to sing. It is. And you wouldn't want to hear me attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so first item on the agenda of the minutes for the January 16th select board meeting. This is the one that was up at Rutland Town School. Move to approve. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes. Any additions, deletions, corrections? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Uh, and I'll vote aye. And Kurt abstained, but just to comment, Kurt was out plowing. That was the day of that very weird snowstorm. Fabulous. Hmm? It was fabulous. It was Random something. Time. Yeah. Okay. Um, select board member announcements. Does anyone have an announcement? No. Okay. Updates from the select board chair. I have it's like four really quick ones. Uh, first, the total eclipse of the sun, which has been scheduled for April 8th, will not be a total eclipse in Rutland County, Rutland Town. Um, therefore, we don't have any celebration or event planned. We're being asked things like that. Um, and emergency management folks have been, and first responders have been advised to be prepared for traffic issues and other things. But I think because we're not in the area, we don't have to worry about it too much. There. So April 8th, mark your calendars for world. nothing in particular. <laughs> Um, okay, number two, I had a phone call from Representative Paul Clifford asking for details about our Cortina contract, which of course is public record. It seems the governor's office is involved, and he's involved with some of the discussions about extending uh, benefits for homeless housing, but they are also talking about restrictions and or cutting back on the amount paid. I said, Paul, you ought to see the contract and some of the things that we put in as extras that should be provided by anyone providing homeless housing. So I sent it up and he was very grateful. Who knows? It could end up in a state contract somewhere. Um, you will see in our packet something from Stitzel Page, Bond Council, um, on the fire station project. We did um, approve or asked to approve, and I think we did, the... If you signed here, I think it was included here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm mentioning it because, first of all, it appears that we are approved for the bond for the fire police station, um, but that we didn't get direct word. Um, it's just from our bond council who says he will have a whole packet of information for us for our February 27th meeting. He's going to get the information to us in advance so we can look it over. But if you have any plans not to be at that meeting, um, we obviously need to make sure we have a quorum so we have enough folks to sign it. Um, just plenty of advance notice on that one. That's number three. Number four, um, perhaps most of us have heard, but for those who haven't, our former administrative assistant to the select board, Joe Zingali, was seriously injured. Um, in an auto accident, and he is hospitalized, and our thoughts and uh, best wishes for a recovery. I'm not sure it's going to be speedy, but it will be. Um, we, we know Joe's a fighter, 
and we know he will be recovering and we just wish him all of the best in his efforts. And that's, those are the four things that I had. So <coughs> I think we have a guest for a action needed a board to meet with Joe Anthony diamond run mall property owner. Hey, good, good, good evening, everybody. Uh, Joe Anthony here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, no, no worries. Wish I could be there in, in, in uh, physically in Vermont, but uh, I'm there in spirit. So, 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 uh, um, so, so quick, quick update. And again, I assume, um, uh, um, you want us on to give you a quick update. I also have Sydney, my executive assistant, and then Mike, who does day to day leasing and, 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 um, um tends to the property as needed um um during this kind of uh redevelopment phase so so first uh we have made significant progress um unfortunately and i talked to the retailer who are our lead anchor uh they've asked me for this meeting not to disclose it uh we did about six different iterations um of a, a site plan uh i think we're finally to the final that hopefully we'll be in position to share uh within the next uh month or so but um uh um we have a big icsc in in new york city every year in december uh, that's where we kind of finalized everything but again i, I it's a household name it's about one hundred eighty thousand square foot user um but again, at this point, uh, uh, they've asked me not to make it public. Um, hopefully, uh, soon enough, it will. We are in advanced discussions also with uh, two hoteliers, uh, one to do a limited service and and um, a extended stay. Um, we have some plans to do some residential on the site, uh, similar to what was done in South Burlington. Uh, some of the same architects, same per people will be involved in that. And then, uh, you know, obviously we have, you know, a host of smaller retailers, um, smaller retailers also. But um, um, again, that that's I, I wish I could tell you who it is and kind of move this forward. But again, I'm, I'm uh, bound by confidentiality with my tenants and certainly uh, um, uh, don't want to violate that. So so. Mr. Anthony, this is pretty much what you said to this board and at least two other occasions that you've yep. been here probably three years ago and maybe six years ago. Um, and so what's different about this one? Again, I, I, I know six years ago, I don't think we owned it six years ago necessarily, but certainly uh, COVID did slow things down. Um, uh, we've had multiple LOIs executed that tenants are backed out of. Um, uh, this tenant's familiar with the market, knows the area. Um, um, again, uh, I don't know what to tell you other than I'm at, you know, I'm at uh, uh, um, their schedule. I don't make the schedule with retailers. They tell me uh, uh, what, what the schedule is. So, so um I, I don't disagree with you this is similar to what i said but again this is a new um new tenant with a new loi and and uh again they're spending a lot of time and effort they've had well, that they didn't have last time they didn't have their engineers uh who i've worked with in the past one uh, uh, a national engineering firm from the cec uh they didn't have um CEC make about 150 changes to the site plans. So I know they're spending money, right? So, so usually um, when a deal's uh, gonna happen, you know, they, they start engaging third parties and engineers, et cetera. So this is the first time that this tenant specific has has engaged, um, engaged engineers and third parties to review um, the site plan and, and the project itself, so. so. Okay, so two, Two, well, one other question in particular, um, and no, two. Um, one is the security aspect. Um, our biggest concern is that the building has been um, broken into on several occasions. The Act 250 permit condition requires that security be dealt with by you folks and under contract with, uh, um, I don't know, 
it was the sheriff's department and we're getting calls for our police department to respond so we were edging back to where we were when we asked you folks to come in a while ago and talk about security so if i could have an update on that please yeah yeah, and, yeah of um, course prevention of break-ins in particular yeah of course and, and again because mike's my eyes and ears and has engaged the company third-party companies and works with my property management mike why don't you step in here and tell them who we engage and what we're doing and and so forth sure um you know since you know we've last spoken um and kind of last came before you one of the most important things that we could do was find a local uh, security company to kind of be even more of our eyes and ears on the inside and the outside. So Sensor is our full-time security group. Uh, they are on site every day. They're looking at you know any soft spots. They're communicating that back to us. Any fixes that may need to be made, they make those fixes. They communicate them to us. Um, you know, they have a very big presence up there. Just them kind of riding around has been a great deterrent. Um, they have cam multiple cameras both inside and outside of the property, which is very important. All linked back to their monitoring station. Uh, so again, it's a 90 acre site, 300,000 foot, you know, big spotlight right on something that people will want to kind of mess around with and do something. These guys are tough as nails. They know the project, they know every in and out of it, and uh, they're, they're on top of it, as I am, as Joe is, and you know we, we kind of work in tandem with Sensor, uh, and they've done a tremendous job of um, you know, fighting a, a real uphill battle here. Um, but they, you know, we're confident in them, and you know, we give them the resources that they need, and they've done a tremendous job. So it, yeah, again, yeah. every day is a little yeah, bit I different, am. and you know, we, we have to meet these kind of challenges, uh, which, which we've been doing. The only call I've had was a door. And again, this is probably what a couple weeks ago, Mike, but that's the only call I've had in months. There was a door that was broke that was replaced the next day. Um, uh, but, uh, again, Mike, have you had a lot of break-ins of recent that I don't know about? Again, I, I, uh, um, I just haven't had a lot. And, and I think, the select board, I think what you did is you sent me, you know, if, if there's police officers that went, you know, I think I think we paid the bill last time. And again, I, I, I don't know that there's a lot of calls, but any uh, but whatever it is, you know, we're, we're not uh, uh, slacking our, our responsibilities. So, so, so certainly um, uh, I, if there is some, I don't know about it. So, Mike, is there anything else other than that door break in over the last few months? Um, so there there's been some action i mean not as much people breaking in but you know anytime sensor is up there and they see action you know whether it's a car up there or whether it's yep. something that appears to oh be yeah we did have to tell we did have to tow a car i think recently yep. that was done um yep. a couple other minor things but again nobody broke no vagrants living in the property no break-ins nothing um um uh no five alarm um uh, type issues no, no issues, nothing structurally, nobody inside, um, you know, no one living in there, nothing like that. And again, if there's something that happens and sensor is able to do it and remediate it on site, you know, because they have their team and they have um, a garage there with all their um, their wood and plywood and everything and all their tools, they need to fix something, they do it right away. So uh, they're good. Uh, they've been uh, tremendous assets to us. Uh, over the course of the last uh, about year and a half of working with them. So if sensor can't handle it and if they need law enforcement, who do they call? Um, I believe their main contact would be to the state police. I I'll have to just figure out exactly what that chain of command would be. Um, for the <laughs> most part, they are on top of it. They are able to handle it. But I, I believe that that's their their chain right there it's would, would, would you like it to who, who should our first call be should it be to to the state well, police the, the act 250 permit requires you to provide that with contract and it had been the sheriff's department um and the whole point is not to burden the town with policing that area we do have our chief of police on the call and we have our um constable in the room 
That's why it's not Ed. That's not Ed. Okay. I think Ed's coming in, but we do have our constable here. So, yeah, I'd like to hear if Mike has questions or, or comments for this, but my understanding is... Sharon was, does as well, so... If the state police get called, they're forwarding it to the town because they don't have the resources to, to cover right. it. So, during, especially during the day when the town's on, um, state dispatch is going to dispatch one of our town officers to that call unless it's after hours when the town's off and then the state police would respond to it. Can they hear him, you? You might want to come over here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And maybe introduce yourselves for these folks. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Delahanty. I'm the first constable here in the town. Um, so if sensor security was to have something that was above, um, you know, their abilities and it was some sort of criminal activity, um, they would call the Vermont State Police and the dispatcher. If it was during daytime hours, uh, they would dispatch a Rutland town officer. Um, but if it was after hours when the town police is off duty, uh, then they would they would dispatch a, a trooper. So, so have the town police been dispatched? Uh, oh, on multiple occasions. Um, and the door that you reference, um, that door had it. If sensor is doing their job, or if they're telling you they're up there every day, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be. Quite honest with you, um, that door that you you uh, re received those pictures from, those are I took those photos. That door had been like that for days, and uh, somebody who was just up there, general public, had told me about it, and that we got dispatched to it, and that's how you end up with those photos. But if sensor was up there every day, you would have got those photos long before I sent them. So I would just check to make sure that they're actually up there every single day, which I'm going to say they're probably not. No, they're not. Can you There's a lot of activity going on up there on the outside that if there was security presence, probably wouldn't be happening. Can you describe the other activity that has been responded to and dealt with? Sure. So um, there's a lot of activity, um, a lot of drug use, uh, people sleeping in cars. Um, right now, if I went up there right now, there's probably a four-door newer Jeep Wrangler that's parked in the woods. It's there every day. Um, I tried to make contact with the owner. They never come to the door. The windows are, they've got those like sunscreens, those reflective things on all the windows. Um, that's on the property. But every single day you go up there, you go up there at night, there's a lot of activity. If I go up there and I put my blue lights on, they, they race out of the parking lot, they take off. So th there's just a lot of activity. I will say, I think the activity on, on the interior has slowed down. I think they've done a decent job of trying to secure the building. So I think the activity on the inside is slow. But outside in that parking lot, there's riffraff every single day. And if you go up there, you can see just in the, when we do have these snow events, you can see the amount of traffic that's uh, go, going on up there. You would think it was um, open for business up there. There's so, much, so many tire tracks. So I would just check, Joe and, and Mike, I would just check with Sensor to make sure that they're um, actually up there every single day. And I don't think they are, to be honest. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll double Russell. check that. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Thank Anthony, you. my name is Sharon Garifano Russell. And um, for 40 years, I worked with the homeless and the street people and the veterans. And I'm here to tell you, my contacts, my street people have been in that building, have been up there. Um, so the information you're getting from the security company like Mike said, if they're up there every day or every evening, I have my doubts. Um, and it's dangerous. It's, it's, you know, and our cops have to go up there. It just seems like we've been put off and put off and put off. You know, it's time to pony up and, and do something. Any other select board comments on the policing issue? My question isn't about that. Okay, yeah, N nor is my next one. So any Likewise, other? I have questions about the tenancy situation. Okay, so let's, um, there, there are other issues that the select board members would like to address. So let's see, Joe and then Matt. Okay, uh, Joe Donato, board member. Um, so my question is regarding um, the proposed um, tenants and the youth. And do you anticipate um, Act 250 issues or problems with getting somebody in there? Or will the current um, Act 250 permit allow you to do 
what you want to do and rent this or lease this to to your uh, individuals. I, I'm, I'm concerned that um, when that part of it comes up, they may just go scattering into the bushes like Mike says they do when they turn the blue lights on. Because <laughs> Act 250 can be a troublesome thing. So I was wondering if you had any information on that. Yes. Yeah, so, so all, all the, the tenants we're working with, yes, the, they understand Act 250. They've done business in, in the state of Vermont. So, so they understand that. And I do, you know, at the very least, we'll need amendments, whether or not they're minor or major amendments, Act 250. Yes, we, we've, uh, um, yeah, we're, uh, yes, I envision that some Act 250 permits and I envision that will slow the process down. But, um, uh, all of my tenants understand that it's it's heck of a lot better than starting from scratch, uh, which could take you know seven years or more. So so, so uh, everybody understands that. Um, everybody understands that. I, I I have a question or not not a question, just uh, some advice from the constable and and Sharon and you know when when we're up there if somebody's sitting in their car and maybe they're at the castleton arena or maybe they're just sitting in their car uh, walk I, i've seen a lot of dog walkers and walkers and and uh should i kick them off the property uh, you know probably not that's, right it's probably um, that's it's there. your property it's for you to determine that you yeah, might no, no, want to I, I get check it. with your I own counsel on that no no i, I Okay, never mind. Never mind. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, yeah. never well, mind. Our constable well, wants to add well, a little John, more. On that. So it's private property. So you own it. So it's that's going to be on you. I think we're just wanting to let you know the the concerns that are happening up there with that property and no, it just I, being vacant like that. I think it just attracts this activity, and yep. that's you know one of the reasons why you hire sensor to be up there is to try to deter it. So I just think if sensor was there as much as they say they are, it may slow some of that down, but uh it's yeah it's your property so you it's on you to throw them out <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll reevaluate sensor and and uh I'll, tomorrow I'll, I'll get on the phone with them and mike and and come up with a better plan because uh, obviously it's not working so so, so uh um, right sir mac Eddie. so <clears throat> joe question on the uh potential projects that you mentioned um is you know, it sounds like you hope to be close with an anchor tenant. Um, I'm assuming that anchor tenant would be filling one of the pre-existing anchor spots in the same footprint in this building. Is that the case? No. So, so it's on the Sears side. Sears will be demoed and and um, uh, start over. Okay. And new, then new building. Is, is there... Um, commitment contingent on any of the lesser retailers or other projects that you mentioned or are they strictly no. on their own nope they don't need co-tenants no no they're they're uh that has not yes their commitment's not subject to other tenancies at the property and, and so and you mentioned the possibility of housing being in the mix is that also going to involve a a demo and in reconstruction or rehab or any of the correct is there any that, that, that building that's going to be rehabbed or is the idea it's all going to be taken down we're going to try to keep some of it but again at this point in just the age and and the way it was built and again it's not going to be an enclosed mall obviously um uh but but maybe we can use some of the kmart box but for the most part i think a lot of those buildings will be demoed okay Joe, back uh, to you, Kurt. Um, well, I just want to say that I am excited that hopefully something will be going on with this property. Um, I know we've grilled you pretty hard tonight, but uh, we all want to see something done with that place. And getting it back up to some sort of functional status is is really what the end, end goal is of what we want to see. Um, so I hope that that moves along at a good rate. Um, Thank you. As, as you may, as you may be aware, there's um, a real need for housing in the Rutland County area and, and all levels of housing: um, singles, elders, low income, moderate income. And I'm curious to know if you've been approached and whether you have considered whether you've been approached by some local. <laughs> 
um, housing advocates or housing developers and whether that's going to be part of the mix that you're talking about. You did touch on housing. Yeah, we, we have designs and we've talked to some um, developers, people who've developed uh, in the state, mainly in Burlington. Uh, so, yeah, the answer is yes. And and uh, uh, I would 100 percent open arms if, if somebody wants to carve out five acres, four acres, whatever, and, and, and do residential. You know, the residential we have over on the old Kmart side and over by more like the field house side. Right. Because I think that plays very well to residential. Um um, certainly. So, so, so yes, we're, we're uh, we've talked to a multitude of, of residential developers and even have uh, some mock-ups, which I can, pro Mike, we can share those. Again, I, I know I can't, I hate not being able to tell you who my anchors are, but we can certainly send over just some designs. Doesn't mean it's what we're going to build, but you're typical, you know, if, if you've seen what they did in South Burlington and, and Burlington, you know, um, market rate housing apartments you know that's that's you know 100 to 200 units is what we were thinking right um, um high-end amenities swimming pools little mini fitness center your typical you know your typical residential component but certainly if you have somebody in mind or somebody who would like to develop um um residential um you know certainly we can uh you know, most of what we do is either merchant built for retailers or we sell parcels for hoteliers and residential and um, restaurants. Right. Again, so a lot of what we do is, you know, a lot of the tenants like to build themselves. So, so yeah. So if there's somebody you think I'm missing in town who's who who has an appetite for developing residential, 100 uh, percent. But 100 percent, I don't think. Um, you know, that project should be 100% retail. Again, that's not how things are built today. And that's, that's not what people want. Um, so and that's not what retailers want. Well, we do have listening in um, Lyle Jebson, who might have been in touch with you in the past about uh, redevelopment. Um, for, and what's the your cedar now, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> hey, Lyle, what's up? How are you, my friend? Nice to, it's nice to see you on the screen. It's nice to see Michael as well. Absolutely. I shouldn't leave Sydney out, but Sydney, Sydney usually doesn't have her camera on, so this is the first time I've ever seen her. <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, also have with us today um, Barbara Noise Pulling, who is chair of our town planning commission, and she's also a member or staff of the regional planning commission. So you've got two good contacts here as well. And at Dumas, our town police chief just walked in we've been talking with joe anthony and the folks at the mall um, so any other questions you might have of us or and frankly me i would love to see those sketch plans um just to know what you're thinking because that would be probably the most the closest to moving along that we've seen in quite a, quite a while so understanding that there are concepts only and that you don't have and we don't need to know who the tenants are but we really would like to reopen lines of communication here so that we can know what to expect and and alert our town staff and our planning commission accordingly understood understood and again i i can show you the residential mock-ups that we have again um i'm afraid if you know Unfortunately, tennis footprints are pretty obvious. So if I send you over the footprint with my anchor, you know, it's going to be on the front page of the newspaper and everyone's going to know who it is. And then I'm going to violate confidentiality and potentially lose the deal, especially with this retailer. So, but I will send, I, we will shoot over um, um, some residential mock-ups that we have um, um, on the site. It would be. It would. Okay. Any I mean, other questions? Last thing I'll say, if you, if you went around the room and you guessed five different tenants, I'm sure you'd get this tenant right. So, so again, yeah. I, we all, we all kind of know who I'm going after, who I've been going after for, for, uh, I guess it's been, it doesn't seem like six years, but maybe it has. Can you come, yeah. can you come back in a month and tell us who it is? Yeah. How about that? I hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope, uh, um, I hope, and they promised me they're pushing it along. They probably, yeah, I just talked to them today. 
Um, I told him I had this meeting. I asked again if I could disclose it. And, and again, I was given the same answer I get all the time from these guys is no. But uh, uh, I, I'm hopeful it's soon. I, th I, I know it will be good news for, for the region and for the town. Um, I know it will be good news. So, Okay. Well, thank you very much for your efforts to redevelop the property. And um, thank you also for looking into the security concerns that we've raised. Um, so, and feel free to, if you need any further information from our constable or police department, um, just reach out to Bill Sweet and he'll be able to help you out. And if you want to come back and chat with us, um, we meet every other Tuesday and we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. Excellent. All right. Um, if there's, thank you. Joe, do you have any? No, I'll just, if you're done with them. Okay. Go. I think that's it. So, um, again, thank you. And Great. we'll move along to other portions of our business meeting today. Great. We'll sign off. Yes. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. We are at questions from the floor or public comments. Does anyone wish to, who is not otherwise on the agenda, does anyone wish to address the board or ask questions? Lyle. Well, thank you, Mary, for coming to our ad hoc uh, housing working group meetings. Uh, there is a group of folks, including the mayor of Rutland and all the logical suspects who are housers, um, is including a developer, a realtor, a banker. Um, we are all pulling in the same direction, trying to do what Mary was suggesting, which is bring a variety of housing opportunities to the region. As you might expect, it's a little slow. But if you see your legislators, encourage them to vote in favor of Act 250 adjustments that are currently in the legislature. Um, so this is the first time that I have felt encouraged that Act 250 might have some changes. It's coming from both three parties, however many parties we have now, it's coming from all the parties. Uh, it recognize is. The issue. So I encourage our legislators to support that. And also in that same vein, on February 9th at 8.30 at the Hub Coworks, that's 8.30 in the morning, we have VHFA coming to talk about funding opportunities that are available for small developers of housing. And we have reached out to bankers, realtors, developers, hoping that they will come to that meeting. And it's basically low interest loans, very low interest loans. Um, that you're just not going to be able to get anywhere else. So we're hoping that people will come and hear about that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lyle. This has been really a fascinating group to work from, and there's a ton of information. And we did have a sneak preview of the February 9th meeting when we listened to a um, presentation from Vermont Housing Finance Agency. So if you're interested in generally the topic and how, how these things get paid for, do um, I think you can zoom in as well as come in person. Uh, not this meeting, unfortunately. Oh, right. Okay. So it's live and in person. Live and in person, 8.30, Friday the 9th of Cowork. And it is at the Regional Commission? It's at the Hub Coworks. The Hub Coworks. Which is downstairs from the Planning Commission. Which is a cool building anyway. And I think Matt and I are in there every Thursday morning with Rotary, so we know where it is. Everyone knows it as the former Opera House. Okay. Yes. How, how long did they actually sing opera in there, Lyle? Sorry? How long did they actually sing opera in that building? A year or two? <laughs> <laughs> they did have they did have an opera performance in there um, a year ago, two years ago. Yeah. And the acoustics continue to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you feel like singing and you want to book space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Lyle. Appreciate you being here. Okay, any other questions from the floor or public comments before we get into the department head reports? If not, Dave Sears, Town Road Commissioner. Do, do we have him? Yes. Okay. I'm here. There he is. I'm here. He was out uh, plowing. That, that was yeah. his excuse last select board. That was, he was out plowing. It was, it was lame, I know, but it was my <laughs> excuse. Um, I passed Kurt a couple times, so he knows that I was actually out there. Yep. And I know that he's there, too, so it goes both ways. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
to kind of get rolling because I missed the last meeting. We had some stuff. I I'm, I think this happened before the last meeting, but we had that uh, wind and slash rainstorm. Uh, we had six trees in the town come down, um, so we ended up we cleaned those up uh, in conjunction with GMP. It was kind of a some of it was kind of a mess. We had to kind of work through them and around them, but we got it. Um, for some reason, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never had a um, hydraulic controller fall apart in the middle of a snowstorm, but we actually had one that storm, uh, the following storm. So uh, we had a controller go bad on the Western Star. Um, just in case anybody didn't know, they don't give those away. I was kind of shocked at what they cost. but So we, we actually fixed that. We got that going again. Uh, we did, uh, I believe this was actually prior to the last meeting also, but we put a, a liquid system on the F-550 so now we can um, pre-treat the salt at the spinner. Um, so we're actually applying hot salt at certain conditions. Everything has to be just right, but that's... Um, so now all four, well, four of the five town trucks, not counting the, the 350 because that one's headed down the road here shortly um but the 550 and the three bigger trucks all have liquid capabilities along with salt so um when we've been able to use it when the conditions are right when the temperatures are right and everything it's really really uh it's working really well everybody's really happy with it uh in that vein snow and ice response has been crazy lately as you're all aware so uh, just a quick um, salt and contractor update. Uh, so far, we've purchased uh, 1,236 tons of salt. Um, our budget is getting kind of thin. Uh, we've got about a little over $4,300 left in the salt budget. And the contractors are at 23 calls. And it's almost February 1st. But I just watched a, a long-range forecast, and they're talking about really nothing until after the tenth for the Northeast. A little bit of stuff down on the on the coast, but for us, uh, we got a little something on. I forget now Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday, and then from there out, uh, it's about ten days of nothing here. So um, we'll take that, and that's we, where we, we are. Won't. We won't comment one way or the other. I've learned Please my don't. lesson. <laughs> um, so thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Um, thank you. A request for, actually, this is all department heads and, and committees that meet with them. Uh, Carrie did send around a, and it was in our packet, um, about a mid-year report on how we're doing on the various um, funds, highway police, general, fire, and so on. So if you could review those with your committees the next time you meet just to see if we're on track i notice that some of them are you know overspent already there are a few things that are overspent i'm sure there's a logical explanation for most of them but um it would be good to keep on top of that as sure. we're into the second half of the fiscal year okay so just a reminder thank did you that, did she send that like an email or is, how did that I haven't seen it. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Um, so we got a hard copy. She sent it as a hard copy to, well, we got it as a hard copy. She probably sent it as a electronically to Bill. Bring it up. Okay. okay. So um, Bill's going to send it around to each of the department heads. So you'll okay. have a chance to go over it. Perfect. Ideally, if we could do this, this is hindsight, right? Or incredible foresight for next year if we could do something like this in like november like a third of the year in and we could maybe project better for budgeting purposes i think we did pretty well for budgeting purposes but um if we had a little of this information and work through it midterm we might be able to come a little closer but i think we're we're pretty good okay any questions for our road commissioner dave sears Nope. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, Dave. Dave. All right. Thank well. you. Guys. 
All right, Marsha Chaffee, Town Head Lister. Good evening, Marsha. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to try to keep my my voice going here. It may uh, may give out on me. I've been kind of under the weather since last week with a horrible head cold. Thank God we all tested negative for COVID, RSV, and the flu. So it's just a nasty okay. nasty head cold. But anyway, um, to give you an update, rest up and get better. Well, I'm trying, <laughs> but the Lister office calls and <laughs> we need to be there. But um, anyway, and well, the nice thing is I've been able to do some work from home. So that that helps very much. Um, but anyway, um, you know, just to give you an update, um, everything's been filed with the state. Uh, the final 411, um, we will no longer be doing anything in the 2023 as bill that's been locked and loaded. Um, we can no longer do anything in there. The error in emissions for homesteads has been filed, which does not require the um, select board uh, signature. The only ones that um, require sig uh, select board signatures is the one that has um, affected property values. And um, the only other thing is, um, you know, the um, the contract that we sent you a copy of. Um, we did speak with Gail this week, and um, she was very amenable to uh, to a contract. She had no problems, and um, as soon as you know the contract is approved, she said to send it along, and she would review it and get back to us. Okay, so if you look in your packet, this is, I think it's E. It is. Okay. Yeah. And there is a, a draft. Is the same one we got the other time. Yeah, yes. I think so. There yeah, is a is draft. the same one you had gotten last week, uh, two weeks ago. Right. We did. We did, and we got it just then, so we put it off until tonight's meeting to give folks right. a chance to review it. Right. Um, so this was... One of the things we requested, and, and I think this agreement reflects it, is some um, responsibility about what happens for town records and what it is exactly Gail's company is doing. This is G&K Associates, what they are doing for the amount of money that um, they are paid. Correct. So question for the select board or questions from the select board on this contract and then generally how do you want to deal with the contract do you want to do you want to send it to town council for review do you want to um, approve it do you want to make some amendments to it we usually review these in executive session um, would that be pertinent for a contract for contract negotiations Yes. I'm just wondering if that's what we want to do before we do anything and then we can decide whether we need to send it to Kevin or. I think that's the smartest thing. I mean, usually so, contracts, that's what we use. Yeah. Do. Okay. So we can do that, at, you know, and then we'll have a decision going forward by the end yeah. of the meeting, I think. But, okay. So um, usually we put executive sessions at the end of the meeting. Marsha. Do you want Marsha in to discuss or do we, because Marsha, I'm not sure how long she's going to hold out with the cold thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, not only that, but between the three of us, um, Marie actually drafted the, um, the contract. Okay. okay. And, and I know. From, from us. So okay. I Marie really is on the call. Yeah. I would really appreciate that. Um, if you're going to have executive session that, we could include Marie in that executive session. That'd be fine. If okay. She, if she wants to sit in, you know, and if Marcia doesn't feel well, Marcia can. Yeah. You know, but I think we should. I mean, I think that's the proper way that we usually do contracts. So we have this. I mean, this is kind of a sole provider. So. Yeah. Um, okay. But, but that would so be my... we'll, we'll take this up under the executive session at the end. Hopefully, um, Marie and Marcia particularly Marie will be available um, and is there anything else 
Pardon, Marie? I was just saying, I will be there. Okay, thank you. I'll hang in as long as I can, but <laughs> I'll, I'll hang I in I understand. There. I, I had that same thing, and I was, I empathize. It was not a fun head cold experience. No, it's not. It's nasty. Oh. <laughs> and at my age, yes. you don't bounce back as, as we usually do. Yeah, I noticed that about me, too. Okay, any other questions unrelated to this particular contract for our listers? Um, I just wanted to um, let you know, too, that um, we're in the process of sending out um, the schedules and the um, uh, inventory sheets to all the business personal property um, people. So um, just waiting. Gail is waiting to get the, um, the numbers from Marshall and Swift. They usually come in towards the end of January, which isn't a problem because um, all the paperwork that we send out is usually out um, by February 15th. So uh, with the three of us working, it should be light work. Great. Um, I do have a question that was posed to me and I didn't know the answer, but I, I know you do. Are we under, have we received a letter from the state saying we must reappraise? No. We have not, not yet, okay. but but we're we're ripe for it, and I know you were going to work on yeah, putting we're, together. We're, we're considering all of our options at the moment. Okay, fair yep. enough. Okay, if there's nothing else, thank you, Marsha. You're welcome, we'll come Mary. Back in the executive session, feel better. Thank and, you. And. Um, We'll move on to our next department head, who is Chris Clark, town fire chief, and I think he is not available today. So, Carrie Clark, town clerk and treasurer. Good evening. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Uh, I have a list of things. I'll try to go fast. Um, first, though, before... Before I start any of my list, um, Dave, if you're still listening, and this goes for any department head, um, you were wondering if or what I sent to Bill to then send to the select board for the line items. It's just simply um, the exact same printout that each department head has in their um, folder when they code the bills um i just made it a pdf and when i printed yours off i sent it to bill so that the select board can have the same copy so okay. everybody should have it and um i've been trying to keep on that schedule of um every other select board um get, getting the report out there to the to the members of the select board so um yes. this isn't anything new so just putting that out there. And um, thank you, yeah. Carrie. I know you've been diligent about it. We've been less diligent about asking you questions about it. So we need to up our game too. As and, long as I'm not left out, I'm okay. No, gosh, I would not <laughs> do that at all. Um, I know. Whatever thank they you. see is what you guys see. So I would never do that. Okay. Anymore. Um, and just side note, I have had a conversation. Um, with Bill briefly, I will be, um, working on the line items that are in the town report that I, I apparently neglected to put a, a number next to. It could be my fault. I don't even remember what I was doing at the time. Um, it was a while ago. So I will double check that now that, um, orders and stuff are done and over with. So, um, Matt, that answers your question a little bit, and I'll be getting that updated. Thank you. Um, on to a brief list of stuff. So, um, the 29th of January was the deadline for anyone that wanted to be on the ballot um, for the positions that are open. And um, I have the ballot ready to go i'm just getting it proofread and by the end of tomorrow i'm pretty sure i can send that off 
to the printing company to have our town ballot ready um, to go. As far as the entire election, um, I'm giving you kind of a, a heads up that there's two ballots in this March one, meaning our town um, our town stuff, which we are all aware of, and then the presidential primary ballot, which is available now. Um, it was brought to my office last week. Um, so there is a choice of Democratic or Republican ballot. Um, anyone can call and request to have absentee ballots sent to their home if they would like that or um, would need that. What they do have to do is remember to tell me which one they want me to send along with our town ballot, um, meaning Democratic or Republican. You're not declaring a party. You're just telling me which ballot you'd like. Um, so that is going on now. Um, we're hoping to have the printed town ballot soon and then we can start sending out the absentee request that I've already received. So it's all basically timing and I do have to say that having the pre-town meeting on the 16th even though the weather was really terrible um, the timing worked out perfectly in regard to trying to get all of this stuff done because so, it's usually a, a huge nightmare. Okay. Um, so note to self we should aim for mid-month in January from yes. here on in okay it really is helpful for so many reasons including the town report too yeah. um let's see in front of you you should have the list of liquor licenses that were available last time but we tabled them uh, i need to either approve or disapprove if that's even a word um on the portal because yes. i've been waiting so if you so could this do that, is item c under action needed we have um applications from the maple angus for a first class restaurant bar license we have uh three applications from jolly associates two for one for a tobacco substitute one for tobacco license and one for second class license and I'm looking at the police chief, and have we had any difficulties with any of these applicants? No difficulties. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Motion has been made to approve Second. these four, seconded by Sharon. <laughs> Discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. And all of us get to sign, so. Somewhere. And I'll pass it around. Great. While you're doing that, I'll just go real quickly with the last few things on my list. So I'm not taking so much time up. Keep going. Sorry, yep. Okay. Um, so it's this is more for the public knowledge um, for people. Now that income taxes are going to be due here very soon, um, this is the time of year that I get a lot of requests for um, second or third copies of tax bills. I just want to remind people that those copies are available on our website. Um, the button, the link for that is on the um, homepage, rutlandtown.com. It's on the lower right. It's a, a light blue button that says property tax bills, and you can search the PDFs and print off just yours. It um, does not show a state payment, but it does show the important pieces that you'll need for your income taxes. Great. Good, um, good new feature that you've added. So thank you. Oh, yes. Um, actually, the, <laughs> the other thing is um, we do have up and running now um, the direct debit for um, tax payments. So that form is now available online as well. It's under my page. Um, and if you are interested in getting your tax payments uh, directly taken out of your checking account each time for um, three times a year, 
you would need to fill out that form and follow the instructions and then bring that form into me and we can set you up. It's a huge, awesome feature and you wouldn't have to remember any due dates anymore. And um, it's a potential to um, not be late or delinquent anymore if that happens to be something that um, happens to you. So take a look. That's huge. Um, and I'm looking forward to signing people up for that. I did put that in a circle article. It will be going out on a Facebook um, update and it, it is online now. So I'm excited okay. about that. Um, you will notice that um, there's two payments for the public safety building in your orders. Um, a smaller payment is coming out of the ARPA fund. Um, we do have it's very rough estimate, but about $100,000 left in ARPA, um, which the smaller invoice can come out of. But the larger invoice going to VMS um, that you have in front of you, as you will remember, the next pool of money that we tap into after ARPA is depleted is the capital improvements that were um, set aside and allocated for this. So that is why that's coming out of capital improvement because there is not enough in ARPA any longer. Okay. And, and so, oh, go ahead. The last one on our uh, 329,858 at the, the end. Okay. Correct. And then the very last thing that I have is um, I will put this on the website on our homepage, but next Friday, uh, I believe it's the 9th of February, I my office will be closed. Um, I have an obligation and my assistant uh, doesn't work Fridays, so um, I will have to have the office closed. So I'll put that out there and... I guess I apologize for any inconvenience, but it's sort of something that's needed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, questions for our town clerk and treasurer. Yeah, you, you heard, in fact, I mentioned to you that we had gotten bonding authority um, kind of in a, we found out about it in a backhanded kind of way, just from bond council saying you got to sign some papers. So um, congratulations and a huge thank you to Carrie for all of the work she did pulling together our bond application for the fire police station. So we're on our way and we'll have a set of um, documents from bond council to sign in late February. That's good news. Um, yeah, very good news. And quick question, we had signed the warning, the select board signed it at the end of the pre-town meeting two weeks ago, um, pending and the receipt of any appropriations that may have come in after that. Were there any appropriations that came in after that? There were none. Okay. All right. So our signatures stand as of that date. All right. Correct. It's gone to the printer too. Well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. That <laughs> okay. If, if you haven't got it by now, you're too late. That's right. <laughs> all right. That's all. Anything else for Carrie? Good. All right. Thank you very much, Carrie. Appreciate it. Welcome. Mike Delahanty, Town First Constable. Good evening, and Good thanks evening, for your participation earlier, too. Yeah, with, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. All folks. Um, earlier, I gave you guys some pictures. I love a little show and tell. Um, just prior to coming to the meeting, probably an hour earlier, I received a call from a, a town resident on Leeson Road about um, the property on the corner, which I believe is 118 uh, US Route 4. Um, if you look at these photos, um, I'll be honest with you, I believe this building's been struck mm -hmm. uh, in the last week or so. Uh, you can see one of the photos actually shows what looks like probably a dual wheel tire track. Um, so this uh, Deputy Chief Washburn actually showed up as well. Um, this building is severely compromised. Um, you yep. can see in those photos, those, the uh, corner is weak. Um, I do believe 
It's 118 Route US Route 4 LLC or something similar to that. And I believe it's owned by Mr. Rogerio. I believe um, it is. I have not spoken to him because I literally took these photos and then I came here. So um, we haven't, and I can <laughs> I can ask Chief Dumas here. I have not received, I don't think you've received a call about this. Um, Looks like I'll be honest with you. I, I live in that area too, and I don't even know how long this has been like this, but it's been like this like. this week. Uh, there's some snow on the uh, cinder blocks there, so it happened obviously the pre snowstorm. Um, yeah, I do know that Mr. Ruggiero has been he's been made aware of the unsecured premise previously, mm -hmm. obviously before mm -hmm. this. Um, I did look inside there, obviously the. There's just floor joists in there, and you can see right down through the basement level. So if someone was a step in there, um, they're going down a floor. Oof. But uh, besides that, this building, um, we no. need to speak with Mr. Ruggiero because this building is now a major problem. Yes, please. Seriously yep. compromised. There yep. is. We have an unsafe building ordinance, mm -hmm. and the first constable has authority under that. So please proceed. Yep. I just wanted to, like I said, I would have taken care of it prior to, but like I said, I took these photos and they came here and I, to show you guys. I pretty much know what his first step's going to be. It's going to have you guys investigate who backed into his building. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I, I will gladly take the lead on it because, yeah. and, I, and it should be investigated. So yeah. but I, I don't know if there's cameras, uh, the housing authority cross street, uh, little Caesars. I'll find out. I'll yeah. see if we can find out who caused the damage, but unfortunately, no matter what, uh, it needs to be dealt with yeah. uh, ASAP. Yeah. So it is now a compromised yeah. building. Yep. So, so if, I will if handle this. Were, I mean, this reminds me of Alice's restaurant. You know, you eight by ten glossy. <laughs> did you stick your head in there? Uh, I did. I don't okay. know if you'd want to stick your head. Yeah. In there. Yeah. The next person that goes to work on it probably better check down the basement first. Couldn't. Couldn't agree yeah. more. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Okay. So. Um, but um, besides that, um, speaking of oh, these, there are uh, some other buildings. Now, this is the one that immediately comes to mind, but I think there might be other buildings in town that are unsecured mm -hmm. and attractive for folks who might be looking for a place to spend the night. So could you also keep an eye on those? I definitely will. I'll, uh, I'll make a list. And I'll, well, somebody I'll... walking in here trying, thinking they're going for they, they went for a cold, different kind of ride. Yeah, uh, if they went in there at night with no light, um, oh. they it'd be a drop for sure. For sure. Well, so it should be secured anyway immediately. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna call uh, Mr. Ruggiero right now. Okay, so. and that's it. That's all I got. For me. Good. Thank you. Any questions or other issues to bring to the attention of our town first constable? Um, if. Mr. Anthony and company need additional information from the police department or the constable. Would you make sure he gets it so yeah. that he says he's going to follow up with sensor security to make sure that they're doing their job. And it sounds sure. like they may not be. So, yeah, you know, any, anything. He and needs, uh, frankly, you caught the little thing. We did send him a bill at one point mm -hmm. um, for police services that we provided. So if we've had a number of calls there, and you want to rough together a bill if it's worth it. Why don't we just see? Yeah. Because that they lot, are supposed to be providing that, and we should not have to. Yeah, there's a lot of public that like to. They're just curious, and yes. they see a vehicle. And I'm not listen. It's his property, right? Um, there, there's been plenty of illegal activity up there. Um, but yeah, a lot of sometimes they call and it's it's nonsense, right? They see a car and they and they yeah. they call the police, right? So some of it's not not worth the trip up but there is plenty of activity up there um and i think he just like i said if he's paying sensor he, he should be getting the service that comes along with it that's so right. that's right all set with our first yep. constable yep. okay thank, thank you right. very much absolutely ed dumas town police chief good evening Nice picture, by the way, on your Zoom. <laughs> on my Zoom? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be my wife. <laughs> and, and the guy standing next to her? Would be me. Okay. <laughs> if it wasn't, we'd have a problem. <laughs> so we had a total of uh, 74 calls uh, for service last two-week period, uh, 18 plus 18 traffic stops. Uh, the grace period before thing, uh, Christmas is gone. Uh, 
us and the state police have been very busy at the south end of the the uh, town. Cortina is keeping us really busy. Uh, the last this last week, I know state police had at least five or six calls there, and uh, I think it has more to do with who's there currently than anything else. Just we have a new group of people. Um, I, I should mention, you weren't here when I, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, Representative Paul Clifford called me and wanted some of the details. Of, well, he wanted first to know what the Cortina was paying the town monthly. And then I said, but don't forget the other things that we have in there, like the play places for the kids and the, pub, the space for public service people. To, um, so I said, and so I just ended up sending him our contract. Um, the governor's office is trying to figure out how to deal with potentially another round of funding at a lesser cost. And I said, I got kind of vehement with Paul and said they really need to make sure that the state is watching everything, including criminal background checks when there are kids involved and all of that stuff. So that all got shipped out and maybe we're going to serve as a bit of a model statewide. So we'll see. A, I'm not going to mention names, but there's a group of people at the Cortina right now who uh, one person is allowed to have the voucher. The other people in the family are not allowed to be in the voucher program, but they all came with this one person. So they're taking up two rooms under one person's name, even though the other ones aren't allowed to be on the voucher, probably because they have screwed up so bad that they won't allow them to stay anywhere. So now they're living with their relative who is allowed to be on the voucher. And that's one family probably good for, I don't know, five or six complaints a week from us or the state police. That's just, it is at this point in time. Oh, on a better note, we did get the uh, speed signs for the. Uh, I don't know if they're up yet or not. Uh, I'm pretty. I think so. I'm pretty sure the highway department's been busy for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> so, but yeah, when he when maybe it warms up or not quite so wintry, they may get an opportunity. To so we we picked them up. Where from are Bill those going? We we picked them up. Thanks, on Dave. From Bill, and we put them all together, and. Uh, the first day that we have, then everybody isn't calling, telling me about a mailbox or their driveway or some other craziness. Uh, we'll go put those up and uh, finish it. Uh, a matter of getting GMP to come turn the power on, and then we're we're rock and roll. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Uh, that's all I have at this point in time, I guess. Questions for the chief. I know that uh, Deputy Chief Washburn asked, I think he emailed you folks for us. Uh, we do need to have a police committee meeting. Yes. Yeah. We'll talk more about that. Next. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have at this point. Nothing further? Okay. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, John Paul Fagnant, Town Health Officer, Public Safety Building Clerk, and Second Constable. Is JP on? Hi, good evening, folks. Hi. Uh, not much to report on the building, and that in and of itself is good news. Things are going along according to schedule. Um, if you've driven by, they're starting to the different rooms are starting to take shape, and that's pretty exciting to watch. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything to report. I had submitted to the board a request for uh, see if uh, there would be some funds from the uh, contract down south to cover my vest. I got a little behind on the certification of that vest. I had emailed all of you last week and uh, wanted to ask you if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, I have to deficit spend. I haven't had to do that, um, but I'll have to deficit spend that item. As you recall, it's in my budget for next year, but yeah. the warranty on the vest expired and so it needed to be replaced now yeah um we did and i think we added it did we put it on the agenda it is on the desk though so um this is a request to pay for here it is safe line defense um to use the cortina fund since JP does quite a bit of the patrolling down there, use the um, Cortina fund for 
the replacement safety vest, $1,234.70 something cents. Move to approve that. Well, my made Mary, my participation hasn't been like a regular presence down there. I'll go down when the whole department goes down and does, you know, like a concentrated effort. Yeah. He's got the more dangerous job, picking people one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Off of um, Grove Street. So uh, the motion has been made to approve the use of the Cortina funds for this. Second. And seconded. Um, so the only question I have, I said, is would be that we're able to do that um, within the, the use of the monies. I mean, it's a to our discretion, right? It's our discretion. And I did hear JP say he does go down there Right, I mean, it is. Yeah, he's, he's part so, of the town's patrol force. So Right. Okay. So I'm, right. I'm okay with that if you folks are okay with oh, yeah. that. Yep. Yep. Any further discussion? We should just review the balance of the fund when we have our police committee meeting. But yes, good, good idea. Good. Yeah. There should be enough in there to cover that. Well, I'm pretty there sure be. there is. Okay. Yeah. The demands are well. Okay. Yeah. All in favor of the motion to use Cortina funds for JP's vest, please say aye. 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 Okay. Motion's unanimous. So, yes, please, JP, take it out of the Cortina. Thank you very much for that support. That, that's all I have Thank for tonight. You. Okay. Any questions for JP? JP, do you um, know, uh, I think the next step on the building is the um, uh, metal panels. Do you know, uh, I, I <laughs> talked with Ed briefly, Kurt and I did last week when he was here for this building's um, work. Um, Mid-February, is is that sound right? It does. Okay, because I, I, I noticed they were putting up wood around the building, um, so I didn't know if they were going to temporarily encase that in plastic so they could do some other stuff, or um, is that, you know, I just I just guess questions, because I drive by there so often, I, I watch the progress, and I was thinking, well, if the metal's coming, why are we putting the wood up? But I'm assuming that's what it's for. It, it is. They're hoping to be, to have a pretty much a plastic enclosure so that they can get right to work and inside. Okay. And then just, they're going to remove that as they put the wall panels up. Correct. So, yeah. Cause that stuff will be, will be in the way. Okay. That's, that's what I kind of thought, but I thought I'd ask, I didn't know if possibly there was some delay in those panels that they felt necessary to enclose the building so they could do some other stuff. Yeah, no, they were always planning on doing that plastic wrap with the lumber. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, a question about the retaining wall versus the slope. I'm. It, am I correct that that's a decision that's going to be made? Oh, quite a quite a ways in the future, like in the summer, in the fall. I think that's a fair estimate of when they will know for certain how they have to take care of that elevation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, Doing I, earthwork now. Is yeah. No, I, I ask because we have a chance to purchase some um, trees and shrubs if we were going to landscape. Um, but that, that ends fairly soon. That will be in like April's, but we wouldn't. So don't put an order in now because we don't know which way it's going. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So um, in regards to the building, one of the things that we did discuss, or I did ask Ed Clark when he was here um, was the name of the electrical contractor that's going to be doing the electric for the building. Um, and it's uh, JJ Brown. Okay. So I was thinking that, since he's going to be there, maybe we should approach him and ask him if he'd be interested in doing running the power from that building down to the pumping station. Okay. Um, I did, you know, way on when this started, uh, I brought this up to JP and he talked with that and they have buried a couple of extra conduits in the ground. So we don't have to go back and dig the parking lot up later yes. for that. So if, you know, I don't know how the proper procedure is if we go through, JP to do this or, you know, because this is not part of the building. This is going to be, be something. From the water sewer fund anyway. Uh, probably running the electric. Yeah. yeah. I would think so. And so I, I would just be separate from the building operation, but I think it's something that if he's going to be doing, it would be nice for him to be aware it needs to be done. And then he could give us a price. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we have a contact. So 
I will talk to the contact and we'll get in touch with him. Okay. And I, and I don't think that that's going to, as far as you know, JP, that doesn't violate anything with VMS or anything. If we talk to him about that. No, not at all. They understood that was going to be separate item from the building. Okay. okay. And I just think yep. we should use yep. the same contractor if he wants to do it. Yep. Okay. The, right. the only reason we involved them, the only reason we involved them was to make sure we got the conduit placed before the parking lot was done. Yeah, always good. <laughs> always good. Yes. Okay. All right. That's what was, that came up, like I said, the other day. Okay. Anything else for JP? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. JP. Barbara Noise Pulling, Town Planning Commission Chair. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see everyone in person again. You know. Um, so a um, couple hats to wear again tonight. Um, first of all, with the, the Town Planning Commission, um, short update on the solar development on Route yes. 7, the post road solar it's called. Um, the full application is into the state, um, but there is going to be a delay because of the archaeological historical yeah. area. Yeah, yeah on site. So there's an MOU now between the developer and um, VDHP, Division Historic Preservation. They want to see a plan. They want to see what the mitigation is going to look like and and the like. So we'll so keep an eye on I that. I think we had noticed or the Planning Commission had noticed that some of the area, the, the solar field was going to go into that area. Mm -hmm. So this is as a result of flagging that. So thank you. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So yeah, that's that's a big display too. It's more. It's, it grew. It's now over three megawatts. So it's. Do you have this, or should I just pass it to you? It's been sitting on my desk. This is the application. <laughs> oh, sure. Bring in copies. Okay. So. We have. We have two. Thank you. And the, uh, the other thing is from the Regional Planning Commission. Um, we are embarking on a new regional plan. Um, it's done every eight years. Um, this one we have two years to work on. We're in the public engagement stage, and it's, it's, it's pretty involved. Uh, lots of pop-up events around, um, community townhouses, uh, town meetings, um, and and other ways to get input on you know what what the town what the region looks like now and where we want to see it to go and uh in addition to those there's a survey if i could hand this out we are um, we, i did earlier you already yeah, have everybody got one, got one. Oh, everybody actually got I, one? I, I passed it out as a your chance to win a fire pit Is that when you were so oh, okay. <laughs> okay so here you go everybody got it okay that's right it's got your favorite qr qr oh. code to mary which yeah i still haven't figured that one out but it's an upgrade from alice's restaurant thank you <laughs> <laughs> But you There's remember But yeah, um, look for the events. Um, it, the uh, survey, uh, please take it. It's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. about thirty questions sure. and uh, and we'll we appreciate your input on that. Can we take it like online and not have to use the QR code? Yes, there's there's look the online address right there. Thank you. So that's that good. <laughs> Anyone here? Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll work the crowd before I leave. Uh, that's all I have. Okay. Um, questions or comments or concerns from other select board members? All right. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming in person so I could give you stuff. <laughs> All right, Mike Rowe, Town Rec Director. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I knew you were kind of hungry, and I thought I'd bring you something since this <laughs> for me. <laughs> That's okay. I'll remember that. I um, had one for you, but you yeah, you gave it away. Yeah, yeah, you know I wasn't I'm, coming. 
I made her gave it away. You knew I, I wasn't away. coming. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to be late. You're the only person I told, and yet you gave it away. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm not giving it up. My heart is not. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't give it up. Don't you dare give so, it up. It's I okay. Don't give it up. We're I good. haven't touched mine yet. Would you nope. like mine? Nope. It's just I know where she stands now. Okay. We're okay. <laughs> We're all good. You enjoy them. <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to ah, save your whatever. help. <laughs> we don't need to go any further. So uh, I don't have much. Uh, the rank is just Mother Nature is just Mother Nature. Uncooperative. I'm very uncooperative. When it's very. nice and frozen, then it freezes, rains, and snows, and we just can't clear it. So we're still working at it. It might even be over capacity now with all the stuff we have. Uh, and the wind took half the parts into the woods, so we had kids fetching that, bringing that back. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if it's frozen. It's yeah. like ten feet of water in there, but hopefully it'll hopefully it'll work for us, and we'll figure it out. And That's we had it gross. shoveled. It's the only place in town that is. Yeah. Uh, well, Proctor had theirs gone, but they're a little bit more labor of love and diligent, and they're it's a little bit easier for them over there. I, I saw that that opened up. Um, Basketball is winding down. There's two weeks left. Uh, we're starting our spring sports meeting. I'll get in touch with Bill as far as our spring sports uh, signups. We're having our K-1-2 uh, basketball camp over vacation. It's not too late for people to sign up for that. We do it right at school. It's been a big hit the past couple of years. Um, K-1-2 for kindergarten, first and second graders? For basketball. I bet that's a hoot. Well, we do it for all of our sports. Okay. So, like in middle school, in, in the fall, we do K12 soccer, and all the middle school teams, the middle school soccer teams, coach them nice. and run the program. Yeah. And we've been doing this for years, like years. And so, basketball is the same way. The middle school kids will come in and they will help run the program. And then we do it in the spring with T ball, and uh, the baseball teams will help with that. So, it's something we always do, and it's it's a win win for everybody. Yeah. Um. So that's going to happen during February vacation. Other than that, before you know it, I'll be mowing, and that I can't wait for that. I'm very <laughs> ecstatic about that. No, I'm really kind of disappointed. I, I'm I'm afraid to walk the trails as far as what's now across them. So, but usually the the patrons are really good to let me know if something has fallen over the the big loop. I don't know if you've been on the big loop lately. Not lately. Um. But I, you know, usually I get a text from Marianne Goulet and she lets me know if a tree has fallen yeah. anywhere near the trail and then I try to take care of it. But yeah, I'm sure we had our fair share of wind damage yes. up there. Um, pretty soon you run out of trees, don't you? Well, <laughs> Not well I think well, Mother Nature, she brings back more. So, but yeah, every one that comes down that makes the ones that are left more vulnerable. Now, there you go. Yeah. Um, and we are a big sand pit up there, so yeah. not much holding them in place. Other than that, I don't have much. Um, unless you guys have stuff for me. Um, there's still basketball games to get out and see if you want to get out and see them. Yeah. Little, little Sweet's doing a pretty good job out there. He's loving it. He is the he is a dominating person on defense. It's fun to watch him. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. All right, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you. No problem. All right. Bill Sweet, town administrator. Do I dare eat this candy, Mike? <laughs> I mean, it looks like there might be some pin marks there. <laughs> oh, yeah, right from the bucket. <laughs> the uh, the basketball team is playing Christ the King tomorrow night. And the last time they played them, it was a aggressive game, and it was a lot of fun to watch. So we are looking forward to tomorrow. And who game. won? We did. Oh. They are they are undefeated. And what time is this game? Seven o'clock at the school. At the school. At our school. At our school. Okay. Yeah. And they're, and they are, watch they that after we go to the other six meeting. We go to the yeah, fifth and six. Game. Yeah. Why do that? Well, it's a lot, it's a lot I, don't when, I don't know when it was that everyone's time became a basketball school, but well, boy, oh boy, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I played when I was there. It was a lot of fun. Well, I played too, but we didn't win as many games. <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're <laughs> rough. Uh, Coach Coach Grimes is very very good. He's he's very dedicated to them. So, all right, um, we got a few things left to go through, but that's uh, but that's all right. Um, so we have the. Um, Easiest part, probably the easiest one is the next thing in the packet is the uh, recommendation from Andrew was that we look at adopting two policies. 
One is a fraud prevention policy. Another one is a disaster recovery policy. The disaster recovery policy is not a quick and easy thing to do. That is that is not going to be an overnight task. Fraud prevention, however, that is pretty straightforward. This comes straight from VLCT's model policies. Um, I filled in our information where appropriate. The And really the only thing that's needed would be two different contact people to put in there. Um, and then it's, if you so choose, it could just be adopted. It's pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's really mm -hmm. pretty plain language and pretty sensical. So the two people to put in there to be board members or. Well, that's, that's up for, that's up to, for discussion. So there Open needs to be two. Yeah. There needs to be two in case if one it's only one person, that person's part of the problem. And that. Right not a good solution so that's what we would need to decide would be who it would be uh who would take the complaint finance committee <laughs> <laughs> what you say is it finance committee no so you could do whatever you could pick i hate to put more work on the board chair but for unless it unless that's complaints against the board chair and a person of her choosing well his or her choosing you know, then i would be in cahoots with whoever i chose so i was thinking if you do select board chair that it should be maybe also the town treasurer <laughs> well, the treasurer I mean, yeah, I is the one that is most likely, most to, likely be... to be complained about <laughs> yeah. I said, um, obviously not in this case oh, but, yeah. Yeah. Not, not I theoretically do you want you know how inept I am at, you know, um, computer stuff. So the chances that I would figure out how to hack and well, steal my thought, money or my remote. My thought would be a, a board. It, do, it doesn't specify that it needs to be a town entity specifically. So my thought would maybe like the board chair, maybe the town attorney or maybe the town auditor, because they are unrelated and would likely be not involved in any, you know, if it's the, if it's. Would this be a. a Position for the grand juror. Oh, I hope. <laughs> what the grand juror? We appointed. We appointed. We did. Yeah. We Darren appointed. Rally. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. 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 See, I, I don't know. This I, is I somebody know. that would be uninvolved, right? That could get to participate in town government and have a value other than a title. <laughs> <laughs> and this this is just who you file the complaint with it's not who doesn't not necessarily who does right. investigation just but right. who you right. bring so right. that's why it doesn't say it has to be someone like elected official or some so we okay. could, you know that that like may that be a, an easier thing to in a while. but remember that we would have to then make sure we fill that position every year right yes okay that gives us an incentive to get somebody to uh, <laughs> do that okay so what's your pleasure town grand juror and board chair okay board chair make that a motion Kurt's hesitating. He has questions no. about the board chair. No. You got your check, you didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Not question. No, I don't want to be <laughs> Okay. Motion. Somebody made a motion to um, make the select board chair and the Joey made the motion. I seconded. Town grand juror as the two people to receive complaints should there be a report of irregularity, I think the ordinance calls it. Yes. Okay. Policy. Further discussion? I think there was uh, probably more in Andrew's recommendations than what we have here, but we can get to that after we finish the personnel policies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, yes. Oh. One step at a time, right, Mike? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, so we've adopted it. If I could ask Bill to type it up for the next yes, meeting absolutely. and then just add in the adoption date and Correct. the two officials and we'll take it yep. from there. We'll sign it next meeting. Yeah. Or actually we could even just sign it. Um, well, no, we'll put it in the it's, packet. It's for next yeah. Meeting. It'll, it's it'll, it'll be, it'll be all updated. So, so we'll be okay. there. Um, <laughs> yeah, boy. Okay. So uh, that's that's great. So I, I will I will I'll take care of that, and I'll have, I'll have that for the uh, for the next meeting. Um, and so the next thing in the packet is 
from uh, the building committee, mm -hmm. the proposals for work at town hall regarding the electric vehicle charging station grant. We have, we have building committee minutes in there as right. well. So who's reporting from the building committee? Uh, dog, you can <laughs> I'll let you do it. It's kind of self-explanatory, I guess. Yeah, it is. So anyway, um, Bill reached out to some contractors to try to get us some proposals for our um, EV work and the electrical upgrades. And we got one back from um, Rob Stubbins' company. And what they're proposing is the upgrades to the building would be in the neighborhood of $39,000. There's some other little bit of work that has to be done so some um, carpentry work but um after quite a bit of discussion you know kurt and i came to the conclusion that we should move forward with this we we the grant that we're looking for offer will pay up to twenty thousand toward the upgrades if we get the grant then great we'll we'll you know we're going to have to kick in about 20 or 23,000 for the rest of it because there's a matching fund of a little bit, but I don't think it's five percent, five percent. So yeah. it's not a lot for that. Um, and we'd like to move forward with a grant, regardless if we get the grant or not. These electrical upgrades are required to do the renovations downstairs, and this is step one. So, however, we do this, I'd like to, I think we should accept this from Stubbins. Um, some of the equipment that we're going to need is four to six months out. Ooh. So regardless, if we get the grant or don't get the grant, we got to do it. So if we commit to this, um, we're probably looking June, July to have to pay for some of this stuff. Um, we have some money. There will be some money in this current fiscal year budget there's money in next year's current or fiscal year budget so we can get this done but this has to be done regardless um the ev portion is about forty-eight thousand, and that's what we're looking for from the state to help with that grant and then that's a five percent match 5%, there yeah. again so okay. we're looking at about twenty five hundred dollars from um twenty five hundred matching funds for that and in whatever this so it would be in our best interest to, to try to move forward with this. Um, we do have some pretty good um, plans for downstairs. Um, we talked with Ed Clark. He was here. Um, we talked about the shower that Mary had mentioned. He said, you know, a couple of looks on the paper and him and Kurt were talking. We're looking and, yeah, we put a wall up here and put a shower in there and it's done. So that's yeah. going to be pretty simple. We drew a square. Yeah, we made it, you know, it was an L and now it's a there, square. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is it. So that came out. Um, a little change downstairs where you come no, in. Everybody else gets stuff named after them. Yeah. You want the shower named after you? Yeah. Uh, hey, Mary oh, Ashcroft. Shower. Rain room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we had a pretty good discussion, but... Um, so that's moving along. Um, I think the next step is they're going to be working on coming up with some prices for us, what their estimates for the renovation. And our plan is that this will be, probably be done in increments. Yes. So number one increment is the electrical. So we oh, need to right. move on that right off. And then we can go into the auxiliary meeting room and the bathrooms. And then probably the last thing that would be done will be the meeting room itself. Okay. Because of the way that downstairs is constructed, one the electrical affects everything but the others don't really enter they do a little bit with walls and stuff but but so that'll be our plan um so we're waiting we'll wait on that so the recommendation from us is to move forward with this probably to get some uh find out from stubbins what the actual um delivery date on this equipment um we're going to need to commit to it one way or the other because the downstairs is just you know, we're, we're at max. We got a 200 amp service in here. There, there's it, it's like you know Close. the old things you see in the old movies where they got stuff plugged in. It's not quite that bad, but we're getting there. It's, it's close. You know, okay. so they they'll be putting in a 400 amp service. Um, one of the big expensive things is the transfer switch has to be changed for the generator to handle the okay. new primary service coming from GMP, and that's quite expensive. Okay. Um, there's and then and then there'll be some upgrades. Um, so, are you asking for us on 
part A? It, it's pretty much the 38,959. Okay. That's their estimate to do the changeover. And, and our recommendation is that we, we authorize that expenditure, regardless if we get the grant or not. Okay. And it's, I did see down under G that several vendors were contacted to provide proposals. Was that for this or for the EV? Yes. This, <laughs> this yeah. is for the whole thing. All we're, we're, yeah. yeah we're, I, I was going, I, I contacted vendors and told them we want, I, I, if I had somebody do one part, I wanted them to do both parts because it would, so other people were, were like, I'll get there. I can get there in like eight or 12 weeks. Like, I mean, it's just the, the this, this is the, this was the only so far one to come and say, yep, and came out, looked at the site, made a proposal, and, and gave us a, a top-to-bottom yeah. price. And they are on our preferred vendor okay, list good. as far as uh, electrical contractors. They've done, they've done, yeah, they've done yeah. plenty of work for us yeah. in the past. Um, and like like Joe said, you know, what the, this the, the, the cost for us would not be billed to us, he said, until they get Invoice. the item shipped to them. Then they then they then they would look for that. So we're 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 not obligated for any money for for a little while, um, but approving the two proposals would allow me to, to then take these and go back to the grant program and say, okay. here's our approved, here's our electrical upgrade work bucket one and our EV installation charge bucket two, okay. and yeah. ask. So it's kind of like a race without seeing the finish line because when the money's gone the race is over but we don't know whether we don't know where right. the money is so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sooner we get our our application in right. the better chance we are of getting and this one this yeah. is we do want to spend some of it this fiscal year because there's still some money available yeah i think we'll have some this year think, yeah. um and then we'll figure out <laughs> i'm i'm thinking that some of the um funds so, so the grant will cover I'm hoping we're going to get the grant. So half of our upgrade will be covered and 95% of the EV um, installation will be covered. That's what we're hoping for. But either way, we need it. Either we need way. we need the upgrade okay, to the building. Yeah. That has right, to be okay. done. Yeah. So that can come out of the op our, our um, building maintenance fund or we could take it out of the capital improvement fund if we don't okay. if we're sure. But well, either way, that, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that has to be done. Obviously, if we don't get the grant, we're not going to go ahead with the EV. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right. yes, and that and that's why that's <laughs> that's exactly why I had him do it in in two, in two right. parts. Yeah. But but I think the sooner that we authorize Bill to put to move forward with a grant, the better chance we are to get it. That's the thirty eight thousand. Correct. The the, the thirty eight thousand is the upgrade to the building, and the um I think there was Bill included in there. The yeah. EV portion is um. The forty-eight thousand, forty-seven. So you want something. both the thirty-eight and the forty-eight, is what you? Well, yeah, that we would do that. Okay. We can accept these, and then we need to do that in order to move forward with the grant. Okay. The the building stuff we have to do, right. regardless of the grant. Right. And okay. and it's better to get started on this because what I'm hoping is as we move through the summer and we see where our finances are, see what our um, capital improvement fund we may be able to you know once um nbf comes up with a plan you know the construction plan and, and some costs we may be able to put out the um bathroom portion portion of that to bid right off and get that done mm -hmm. yep. and and so the idea would be to get as much renovation you know if we do it over a couple of years and maybe we can do this without borrowing money you know which would be our goal so so let's do this in two motions okay <laughs> The motion okay. one will be yeah. to, to approve the um, upgrades to the electrical service to the building for the estimated cost of 39,000. I lost it. It was right. 39, 9, 59, 43. 38, okay. 9, 59, 43. Is that a motion, Joey? Yes, that is. Second. Second. And the money to come from? Uh, building maintenance. Okay. And possibly, if, if needed, the. Um, and to apply for a grant. Yeah, we're going to be applying for the grant. Okay. Motions made and seconded. Yep. Discussion. And we beat it to death, but we're good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll vote yes too. Okay. And the second one would be to accept uh, their. Um, I don't know if we're accepting it or whatever, but it's a forty-seven thousand um, dollar cost for the um, charging stations, and the bulk of that to be paid for 
or to be done provided we get the grant. Okay, yep. contingent upon the grant. receiving the grant. Okay. Yes. So, again, is that a motion? Yes, it is. And I second. Okay, motion is made and seconded to um, tentatively approve $47,000 for the EV charging station contingent upon receipt of a grant. And, and just so for discussion, mm -hmm. the when you come to charge a vehicle, there will be a mechanism that you have to pay for the electricity. We're, we're not, we're not yeah. um, donating the, the electricity. <laughs> we're just providing the space. And, and when we talked with the fellow from Stubbins, the, the contractor he's dealing with that does these say, you know, they have, so, you know, you can go and put your credit card. Like being going, it sounded like right. being going to gas station, put your credit Pretty card much. in, it reads it, well, you fill the information. The one up at CB is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so that's okay. that's what this will be. You know, we we can set the rate. We can and, set yeah, the rate. we can. Yeah. Set the rate. yeah. Okay. So, in other words, and the other thing that came up, so as long as we're discussing this, is this would be to me just like water and sewer. There will be an OEM fee. So whatever okay. GMP, you know, if GMP is charging, we'll say, and you got to look at the GMP charges because it's nineteen and a half cents or eighteen and a half cents. But then there's some other stuff. So, say we're charging. I don't know, 25 cents a kilowatt hour or whatever we charge. But there'll there'll have to be an O and M on this because this will require maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so we will need to establish a fund similar to the water sewer okay. once this happens. All right. So we're not putting, you know, yep. it's it's oh, these are makes sense. It's like becoming a, you know, it's an electric station, not a gas station. Yeah. But so of, motion's been made to <laughs> Tentatively approve the expenditure of $47,000 yeah. contingent upon receipt of grant to defray. Nine, about 95%. 95%. Yeah. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Passes unanimously. Excellent. Good. That's Thanks. pretty much everything that we discussed that day. Yeah. There, there will probably be a one-day closure of this building. For Eventually. the for the switch, yes. you know, yeah. switch over, but yeah. that'll be we will, we will have that'll be well well advertised. Yeah. Yes, and there may even be a possibility, and I don't know how GMG, GMP charges, but you might get them to do it on a Saturday. Okay, you we'll know, see. We can see. ask for a municipal I, building; they just might do it for us. We know some people that work there, so maybe we can pull we some can people. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Know some people. Yeah. Uh, okay. The next item uh, in the well, I, well, I'm sorry. I should, so related to the uh, Marty, come on up here. Yeah, Marty's, Marty Wasserman, Town Emergency Management yeah. Director. Um, Marty has this is this is partially building committee. Um, Marty has asked that we get the veterans. Memorial Committee together, um, and we have heard from Dr. Sharnock that he's going to try and pull the committee together to start advising on what can happen out here. And Marty's Marty and Mary do the summer landscaping, so they're trying to get that pulled together too. Well, I so. got that leads me to a couple of things. So I've talked okay. to Dave a couple of times, and I'm asking him for dates. I'm leaving him as running this, but I'm doing everything under under him. Okay, and um. As soon as we have a date, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to call that committee back and decide what to do with the monument. Um, uh, also, Mary and I are talking about, and I got to be careful about what I call this because I can't call it a garden club right? because there's the Rutland City Garden Club, but something to that effect. Uh, we agreed we we're going to take care of the the pump station up by Post Road, as well as the fire station here, as well as out front, like we have. And I'd also like some thought ahead of time about the new station, the new fire station, police station. We still have plenty of marble um, in a pile. Yeah, we do. And uh, if if there's some areas of that station that could be susceptible to damage from impact, 
um, I think we should build another planter. <laughs> uh, and let's build it before we have a dent. Yeah. <laughs> that one's built a little different up there. Yeah. What's that? I said that station's built a little better, built better because most of the occupied portion of the building is in the back. So you got to come out of it. Would be me coming out of the hay field and running into the building. Well, there's a danger. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, but it would might be nice just to do it to address Gary, the building. You up. shouldn't have said that. Well, <laughs> Jinx well, things. Yeah, we'll have to you see. Know, have to see how the rough. Well, once they get done with it, but that that would be great. You so, know, it'll pretty it up. It'll bring that marble block back, and you have some at this station, some at that station. <laughs> yes, that'd be kind of nice. Um, so we. And and you and I have talked briefly. There's also the Master Gardeners organization in the county, which is trying to do a small garden in every town. I'm involved with Master Gardeners. So if that group could get together with your group and do some of these, and eventually, hopefully, the pocket park will need some attention, maybe not plantings, but your own, do you want your own out. little group? Do you need a name and a, your own little group? Or what do you want? I don't get all upset about that. I don't. I add, you know, what I would like to see, and yeah. we we missed the boat. So I got to wait another year. Is okay. a little pot of money yeah. for uh, these yeah. bring around town. We do have the selectman's pot, right? But I would like to see a designated money. You know, we can call it the Rutland Town Horticulture Club or whatever you want to call it, beautification club, whatever you want to do, it. and and put some money in there, three, yeah. four, five thousand dollars for plants and offset stuff. I mean. These folks are driving around. They're spending gas. They're spending right. time. I know you want to. You don't need most of the time. You refuse payment for anything you do, which is not in your best interest. Um, but we should be able to have this money because we're getting more buildings, you know, and we got more planning, and we got more stuff, um, and you know, something that can be carried on once. Yeah, and. Marty and his wife decide they've and had enough. They can pass this on to somebody else. Which is what we've done yeah. in the past, too. So, so get you guys some help. Um, yeah. So the, for next budget next cycle, budget. in the meantime. Yeah, in the meantime. Uh, we'll keep yeah. an eye out for. We'll, yeah, we'll find something if it's needed. Yeah, I think we probably will. Um, I just want to ask, as an emergency management respect, is the thought that the downstairs here can be used as a shelter yes. if we need to? Well, but that's uh, a no. shelter for people in the town. Yeah. 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 This, not this, a homeless shelter. Not no, over, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, this not is overnight. probably this is, not an overnight shelter. But well, it, there, oh, e, wait a minute. E got, e under I mean, act, wait, 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 wait. Because you and I talked about this and I said I'd put it on the agenda. It was on the agenda last meeting. For during the snowstorm <coughs> and it is now back on the agenda to discuss town buildings for warming and or overnight shelters now you raised the issue with me because you got the phone call when green mountain power said hey there's some town residents who have lost power is there a place where they can go right. you did a di deep dive into the Boy, difference did I make a mistake <laughs> <laughs> between the difference between a warming shelter and an overnight shelter. We well, had it's a one shelter, time. I forgot the other term right now, but what, an, gotta be careful. one Which time term? when but we in had town. the person um, who had to be evacuated in Center Rutland during the flooding, and fortunately the house was not flooded after the fact. Right. But, but they she had a was place there to overnight, stay. right? right. That so was an overnight thing. There um, are two times now that we know we've been called upon and asked, is there a service? No, we're not opening a homeless shelter for whoever got that rumor started. Yeah. This is just to for those two kinds of isolated incidents. An emergency yeah. operation center. Well, it's emergency evacuation site or temporary evacuation site. Yeah. Either or. And um, you'd have to have volunteers to go in and help. Right. I would gladly do it. Thank you. You know the the and that's I think something always... I want to do. It's another thing I'm planning is to start. <coughs> I've been talking to different people, and thank you. I'll put you on the list of people who would be willing mm -hmm. to work at this. Because okay. um, if if you have an overnight shelter, you have to have some type of places for them to sleep, bedding, stuff like that, and you have to have things in a pinch. The fire stations have 
now that they especially have power and backup and the same with this one they've always been considered a temporary either evacuation site or temporary shelter because you know to others suitable places usually a lot of times like during what was it irene or whatever the the high school was opened up as a red cross place where people could go um Has but anyone ever contact the red cross since it's recently like in, the, in the past when people have had houses burned down with no place to stay red cross got involved and find usually helps find them a place yeah 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 when rutland city would they you had know. um so as far as flooding, the mission went in and cooked we cooked the meals for the yeah. officers yeah. Well, I mean, for all the police as far as allowing either the fire station or here or whatever for a temporary emergency site i think that's kind of you know for town residents has always been kind of an unwritten yes mm -hmm. Well, the only reason I'm hesitant about saying you're absolutely correct about the word resident right, is because as we found out in one situation, the fire departments were, were very involved in this. Rutland City wound up covering part of Rutland Town and Rutland Town wound up covering part of Rutland City because of the way roads were flooded. Yeah. During Irene. Yeah. We yeah. were, and then, we all, then you have to be open to that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was talking um, to the chief in the city, who's also the emergency management officer there, and Bill and I have been working together, you know, about we may not have to open here so soon. We can, if they open at the city, at the school, um, then we can send people right. there. And they're willing but if you can't get them there, you've got to do something with them. I in can't the get them, right. that's another thing. But right. if we don't have to open a, a a uh, place for one person or two persons while well, there's other places available. I don't want to. Um, this last one at the beginning of January, boy, did I get phone calls and I learned a lot um, because I was getting calls from all different in the state from emergency management, different people in different departments. And um, it was a good learning lesson, if nothing else for me. Yeah. So I learned never to declare that we have a shelter. No. It's I'm opening an emergency operation center. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, also, I'm going to want to get pre-approved by the state building. Um, you know, that if we do, we have that okay. We, so this sometimes, is Marty, too, you can get cots from um, the place on um, Post Road, the armory on Post yeah. Road. Yeah. Well, well, that was something else that I started thinking about and looking into is I don't think any place there's a place to store. And even if you did, let's say we used one of the, uh, what do you call those places, in the fire station? Mezzanine, two, mezzanines. The mezzanines. Yeah. Uh, and you store all the stuff up there and then you need it and then you got to get it down and you got to move it. So I'm thinking more of a trailer that we can move to the location. So I'm looking at that possibility of, of getting that kind of equipment in a watertight container that we could store and move. So that's the, that's the school, I guess the school has always been considered as a long-term evacuation site if you had to, but there's no provisions for overnight stays there. But, but that's always been, that was part of the, reasoning for the generator if if you had to house a hundred people because for whatever that that building the town would then you'd have to get the red cross and everybody involved to open up an evacuation site we've never had to do that usually because of the way the city is and the way things are that's where the red cross goes yeah, yeah and i spoke with the red cross the red cross would say you know we open we open on the one in the city they're opening that they're going to run it Right. And they'll take people from other towns. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, so our, if we haven't had use of it, except for those two little incidents, it's it's not a big thing, but it would be nice to be prepared for all uh, maybe a handful of people in a couple of different places. Right. Yeah. OK. It was a, it used to be a once every several year issue. Now it's a it seems to couple be more. times a year problem. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the yeah. other thing I brought up before, and I'm not sure where we stand with this. I don't want you at the fire stations. But what I do want is I want 
a police representative here. I want a fire representative here. I want the select board here. You got to have the town treasurer and clerk here. This makes the sense to have as your emergency operations. And, and it is for right now, but because we're getting the federal grant, the emergency operations center will be at the new public safety building once it's completed. In title. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, in, 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 and you can operate do, doing the way stuff is provided you still have computer access to the records and whatever you need during a catastrophe, everything could be there. Okay. And part because, of it's because, because of communication the there too. Here makes, maybe makes more sense. That building, I don't know the layout, so it may make perfect sense eventually. But right now, if the select board had to make a, a decision, you can go into a room and close the door. Uh, there's offices there where emergency management people can be and close the door. Um, there's room in there, isn't there, Ed, the way it's laid out? Yeah. yeah. Actually, room that emergency operations. It, it has to be because yeah. we're getting the money. See, for we, it. I, I, yes. yes. In, yeah. in oper right. the, I know the, technically yeah. it's my building. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the thing with that is, is if you can be there where the PD is, where the fire is, the radios are, um, it, it takes away having to have multiple locations for different radios and everybody's kind of together so you can communicate back and forth and, and that's a pretty good location up there um yeah okay you know, so and, and we would just if you need a board representation during an emergency whether we have to come to this building or go to that building it's going to be six of one a half dozen to the other as to how you're going to be able to get there that's right um, yep. de and depending on communications the, the one thing that's come out of irene that is probably the best thing in the world is the ability to do what we're doing right here. Yes. I could be home and right. be part of that. You could be there or Ed or whatever. So is it, that is in that technology and that equipment that we're gearing up for downstairs was going to have the same function as this room when we get done. But, okay. So under action needed, we have discussed the use of town buildings for warming and or do we need to make it official? I mean, it's I don't always no. It's always been the, kind of yes. It's kind of been understood. Yeah, yeah. And in a, like that. Yeah. In an just emergency. Leave it like that. Yeah. At that point, at this okay. point, just leave it like that. Right. If and I if find you it some reason down the road, I have to have it. Okay. You know, and then I'll bring it up. Right Dead now, of winter. Somebody's been without power for two days. Their house is froze up. And they need a place till they can find a place to go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know, right. obviously the building will have to be somebody from the town there, but. But it's, well, it's kind of what you did this summer when you had that situation. You took care of it nicely, yes. very nicely. All okay. right. So that kind of covers yeah. E. And then we're back yep. to yep. Bill's report. Yep. All right. Thank you, Marty. You good? I'm good. Okay. Are we good in emergency management? We're, Is there anything we're other excellent. Yeah, you're excellent. We're working pretty well together. <laughs> good. <laughs> We've got things, we got things handled. We got things covered pretty well. <clears throat> um, after the... Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Marty. Thank you, Marty. Power outages. Go ahead. What time is what do we need? Seven thirty. Same on Thursday. Yep. Mm, look at that. You're welcome. <clears throat> After the uh, successive power outages, I did have Johnson Energy go around and fill up all the generators around Good. around town. The schools ran; they ran an entire school day on a generator, and it was Good. flawless. So. Yeah. Did they have to, or was it? Oh no, planned? well they needed to. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. There was a some, that was a Wednesday, I do believe, and power went out about midnight, and early. it didn't come on till about two in the afternoon yeah. because my brother and my daughter had yeah. no power. No, yeah. so <laughs> the school the generator came on and did Good. it. They they never they they didn't miss a beat. So Good. Uh, so I did have them go around. It, that I haven't seen. I don't I don't think I've seen the bill for that yet. So um, but we'll we'll, we'll get it covered. But they they. Some of them, some of them definitely ran for a while, so that was. Uh, but it worked. Every, everything worked like it should. It should have. So, so really did, did do the we one at the highway garage work? Yeah, that was running because we had a call and we were able to go in, and, and yeah. it was perfect. Okay. Yeah. And all that, because that power all comes from like Stratton Road. Yep. And for some reason, that goes out all the every storm. Every time the wind blows, oh. you lose power up there. Comes comes, comes up Route Four, four down Post, Post Road, Road, and it ends at the foot of Post Road Hill. 
Yep. And it also goes right yep. up post road extension up park lane. Yep. Yep. All right. Which for why ever, why and that's it, not fed off route four. We're just creek yeah. roads. We're fine. Right. So yep. it's, um, it's fed so weird. That fuel, Billy. Yep. Where do we take that from? Generator maintenance. Generate maintenance. Yep. Okay. So to that note, um, and and Dave is gone, and I can't ask this, but when the generator was installed at the school or at the highway garage, Dave just went out and got it done, and it was wicked expensive, and it exhausted all the funds out of that account. Yeah. So I think what we should do, and we need, and we can talk with Dave, is take that payment. It's just going to be some paperwork for Carrie, and pay that out of the highways building maintenance fund, which probably will overspend it, but it will put. The it was like nine or ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, put that did back in. See it come through on this one? No, no, it's been it was a while okay. ago. Yeah, it was, it was right. a while ago that and and that shouldn't come all out of that um generator maintenance. It so right. we should take it, it out of that not. other. So and I think Dave will be okay. I always got the surplus. And, so. Right, and so if he overextends his budget in that one line item, okay, it, there should be carryover. But we can discuss that with Dave. And yeah. and I meant to do that though. But I don't know if we've been together since, I don't know if I met with him since we talked about it. But anyway, okay. and that would, because otherwise that other account's going to be well overspent. <laughs> anyway. So we'll leave that to Highway to tell us when we need to, if, if at Yeah, all, I'll talk with Dave and, we need and to approve that. whether we have to so have a committee back meeting. Back to Bill, because we do still have an executive yeah. session with a couple of things. Uh, yeah. We, uh, the grant funding for the Route 7 sidewalk is moving to the next step. Okay. We need to select a municipal project manager. Uh, the email I gave you in the packet is from the state. Uh, there are basically three different avenues. We can do an RFP and hire a firm to do it. We could uh, select the regional planning commission to do it, or we have a town representative do it. Um, there part of the grant funds includes the cost of this person doing this job in kind don't we have to do a match there are there is there is a match yeah so if we have one of our for example dave sears highway do that we can use his time to match the grant i i believe so i i, I think I, we can i think we yes, can you're right yeah, yeah. um so they they would like to know what direction we would like to go if we want to use a town person uh there is they do have to it's you basically have to apply for the job and they can they'll they will say whether or not they'll accept it or not so there is a um you have to send a, there's a questionnaire and a resume that has to be submitted if you want to be someone from the town okay what's your pleasure on this Does highway have a recommend for this i mean this just came in, so they haven't. They haven't talked yeah, about we it. haven't even seen. It. I mean, I would, okay. I would ask Dave if he wanted that. The okay. regional planning, it be, it would be Stephanie from the regional planning commission who we worked with a bunch of times before. Uh -huh. Um, and as a project manager, as right? as a project manager, the cost is about forty two thousand dollars, but it's already part of the grant funds. It's already included in that. That's why it's so much grant. So it's not all for construction. It's for this other stuff in easement. Yeah, that six hundred and some. But, but that would be the person who would basically be helping us manage the project. All right. Well, maybe we ought to think, go that route i think i'd rather have dave do it or put an rfp out and then that keeps that keeps us more in control of the project right oh well, there's yeah. that i agree and if that way and if we can offer it as a match then yeah. so much the better but i mean if dave doesn't want to do it then you know we'll all right just so put it out, would you put folks out check and, and see if dave's okay with doing it yeah. and then I can, I mean, I just call that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. we yeah. have to actually vote on who we designate. Yes. So we would have to know by next meeting. Yeah. yeah. We, we can. Any, we should know by next meeting. The man. Be a okay. letter to. Yeah. There, there's a few things. That, depending on which way, there's, it's not, that's like the first step in it. It's yeah. not the last step in it. There's, there's, okay. there's a few more. So is it, um, is it primarily to oversee the construction? It's kind of like JP. Okay, rather than it's a, it's doing all of the input yeah. on, in the gear system for the well, that's that's the grant funding. That's the, I, I don't we haven't gotten to that we haven't gotten to that part of that okay. yet. But this is this is this is like our clerk of the works for the project. Okay, it's, that's it's that, it's so that I think of, that's if Dave will do it, that makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, so, yeah, because it keeps us. I I, I don't disagree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you got the copies of the map for Dyer Road. Um, it does not have 
I couldn't find a copy that had John Deere. What's the, what the on, yeah. on there? Because oh, yeah. they're yeah. they're not on there. No, but. but it does look like property it, it does. I, I would where imagine the pins that are, where the location is, yes. the, the road is entirely on the dire property. It is. And yeah. that's probably why when you sent them the letter, they didn't, nobody came because they have no involvement. Yeah. Do we want to discuss that? Where we're going to um, do that separately? That is, we can do deliberative session, which means we can discuss it, discuss it in the open, or we can go into executive session to discuss it. I it's it's up to us no need for exactly i don't okay. see anything i mean okay. if you want because i would based on this information the information that we have gotten from the owners and some input from our road commissioner after i talked to him about this um i would move that we give up or throw up the dire road property motion's been made is there a second yeah. okay i'd like because this is deliberative and we do have to issue findings about why yep. um, we need to do let's let's in our discussion let's just toss in as many things as we can remember as to why we're giving this up okay so go why are we giving this up it serves no residence or, or building there's no residence or building okay um we cannot gate the property uh, the road being any relation to the town which allows for illegal dumping and other illegal activities to take place on that premise. Okay. That's so we, then the private property owner could gate it, but we cannot. Right. Once it's a private road, it can be gated. Okay. This is all when um, we're tossing it out, but this yep. has got to go in some detail in, yes. the, yeah, yep. in the minutes. Um, the cost to the town as we experienced um, um, can to, be considerable because there was um, a well, we're responsible camper, for camper any... parked there this summer, and we, we had an estimated cost of two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred to remove it. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. We're, we're also because that's a class four road. We're also obligated to maintain things such as culverts and whatnot there on that stretch that benefits nobody, nothing, one one taxpayer essentially. Yep. Okay. Any other reasons? Just trying to think of all of the. Um, I think those were the gel, the bulk oh, of it. Oh, I, I would I would note that the property owner um, has access has frontage on Middle Road and quite a bit of um, frontage and access out on Middle Road, so it doesn't need Dyer Road to connect to anything. Right. Okay. Um, the other thing that was brought up by the road commissioner and we talked to that. If any development or anybody was there to do this um, manufacturing, whatever, the negotiating that 180 degree right hand turn off a of middle road is almost they, this is not a good road access to the property. If you can imagine a tractor trailer coming down middle road and have to turn 180 degrees to get in or out, um, it, it's just anybody that develops this, this this is not a good intersection in in it's so there's that was one of the other reasons why you know and any development that went in there would have to upgrade the road considerably anyway they would like i said they they would probably not use that intersection because of just the way that is it's it's right. it, it's, yeah. it's just not feasible for day-to-day -day in and out traffic one one individual with a house out there this is a long driveway okay. matt had something uh, i just want to make sure i'm understanding the, the map correctly and what it was we were reviewing <laughs> so, yep. so this is a little bit hard to read but it looks to me like <clears throat> this parcel here line comes all the way down to the bottom okay it yeah. comes up to the west side of Yep. middle road and then it's crossing dire road here right but and this this is the john deere dealership yeah. so the pin is right here so is this, this now a separate lot or not? yes yes that that belongs to united ag and turf so okay. and they were notified they were notified they didn't. so what this delineation is the right away so this is a route seven right mm -hmm. away this is the right away here for clarendon and then where this cross is right here i'm not sure why they show it going across but the pin is here and then it runs up. So this is this land was owned by Dick Smith. 
and it was sold to Phil Alderman. He put a Kia garage in here. Mm -hmm. Then they sold it to United Ag and Turf. <laughs> so the property line runs on the west, east side of Dyer Road up to here. That's so it. the question originally when the, that spurred the digging up this map was whether this once is thrown up whether this gets split between the two parcels right. or whether it's all right which would make yeah. it more difficult for either the current owner or a new owner to reestablish that as a town road okay but if this united ag and turf is this parcel over here yep mm -hmm. and they about the road mm -hmm. so isn't that the rule that it gets split between the two no because the the property line is on the right hand side yeah it's, it's not on, running down the middle. Of it's the not down the middle. If if it was split, the property line would basically be in the center. Or if the if the property lines were on each side of the town right away, the town actually owned the property of the right away. Property line split. Right, but we just have a right away to pass over the dire property. Yeah, this is the way this is. So you're this saying is. this over here is the dire property line? It's on the a, right hand side on the right hand road. side of the road. Yeah. You can see there's, um, the pin point. Right where the N is, is there's a this, pin. There's pin. segment L4, L5, and L6. Yep. And you get some of the... And the line on the other side is just the right-of-way? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. It, it delineates the right-of-way. So the, the road is all on the Dyer property. We can tell this because these lines are supposed to be different. Well, this is supposed <laughs> to be a certified state of Vermont land surveyor and they seemed to know what they were doing at the time and when i did talk to mr mandela he told me that the map did show that the pins were um to the right of the road the east side of the road that was yeah. his understanding that they owned the road yeah. so okay. it, it makes it less complicated if anybody wanted to reestablish that way that right away we should also note that we were provided with a copy of the survey map from Mr. Mondella done by Robertson Franzoni on I, May 13th, actually, 2005. Actually, yeah. I'm doing this for the record. right. This was actually provided to us through their, the Andy that was there, their right. uh, agent. Okay. He, he emailed me. Okay. Uh, asked me for my, or he texted me, asked me for my email address. Mm -hmm. He sent this to me. I forwarded it to Bill. Okay. And, then and, and Bill it printed for it for us. Okay. So, so we we also viewed the survey map that was provided yep. and have made the finding that the um dyer road lies within the dyer uh the uh, mandela property yep. okay anything else any other things that would support i mean we got quite a few things now so yep. If not, all in favor of the motion, which is to throw up Dyer Road as a town road, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Aye. Okay. It takes care of so G. So this, this effectively end, <laughs> so we would be removing Dyer Road from our list. From yes. our highway list, okay. yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So we're going to lose a half a mile of Class 4 road. And whatever you have to... Check and see what else State we need. We got to notify yeah. these people. We got to do a written decision. I'm sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. whatever we have to do, let's. Yep, we will do that. Thank you. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, yesterday, some updates to the website were done for layout. Uh, as we've been adding things, space has been getting a little tighter, so we made some updates to layouts and some pages that look much much nicer now. Um, we've added some functions and. Oh. and some features that are just make it a little bit easier to manage. So it's it's coming along and, and working better and better. And as we do these things, the search functions getting better and better as we as we do these things. So uh, we're we're making that easier. Uh, the safety grant through VLCT is available again um, this year. We've we've done very well with that over the years. Uh, this year is a uh, five thousand dollar grant with a fifty percent match. So. Not quite as lucrative as it's been in years past, but uh, it still is available. So if, if, if there are departments that would like to get something for half price, then we'll see what we can do. What is that again? Uh, VLCT offers a grant to member municipalities for safety things. So we've purchased 
um, some fire department gloves. We've purchased camera systems for buildings. It's all things related to being able to reduce claims. So the cameras help reduce claims because we can monitor monitor uh, areas. We bought a sewer inspection camera with it last year. Uh, we've bought a, we've we've purchased tens of thousands of dollars worth of things and 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 received most of it back. So um, it's a it's a great uh, opportunity. But it's, we're, because we're a member of VLCT, we get we get access to the grant. So did, did I ask before? Can we get <laughs> the police safety vest? Or was that one of the things we couldn't get? I think it's one of the things you can't get. Yeah. But there, there is a, there is a list of, okay. of yes, you can and no, you can't or ask. Um, so we can we can we can we can look at that list and see if we need to. Yeah, but I was also able to add it to the hard drive, so it's oh yeah, longer periods. Yeah. And it's helped solve a couple of murders. Actually. Yeah. Good. Would have drove by the front of the yeah. Would have had our uh, personnel consultant to. Uh, should be reducing future claims. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make an argument? I'm I'm all for it. Um, but it it it, is, it just it just started a couple weeks ago. So, um, but that that is again on a first come first serve basis. So, um, the town report uh, is done and off to the printer. Um, I heard from them yesterday. It is completely printed. Um, the there's a, a line in the orders there for the check for the postage so when that gets up to them they will get mailed out so they will be out uh You're gonna tell us about the little glitch there was, a, there was a little glitch there was a little glitch and I, I i will i will take the responsibility for that one we forgot a page and uh, i forgot a page and i realized it yesterday morning um because i was looking through for something else talking to someone and i'm like that's weird the page number doesn't match the table of contents i go but and it's page seven that's missing. Well, and it's on four, page seven. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the total town budget. Oh, so not not a great the... not a great one to miss. Not a great one to miss. Yeah. So they, I they have I have sent them the page. So they are going when they, they always create us a digital copy which goes online. That copy will have it included, um, and we will we will obviously print the page to have it for the ones that we have here. So it'll be the printed copies that get mailed home. will not have it. Um, I don't know we'll how many put, people are going to miss it. We'll put something on the website. We, 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 yeah. We, we'll, I'll, I'll put it out there. It's, it's. We'll so I was it. doing research it on. last night. Okay. I was doing research last night for tomorrow night's school board meeting. And I found a town report that the numbers appear to go backwards uh -huh. the pages are numbered from the high numbers to the low numbers because i was trying to find a school board learning <laughs> and i am telling you, you want to find something confusing there it's that, like that's confusing that so so, so yeah. these little glitches do occur it, yeah they do it, it happens those ones are worth extra at auction every, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, right. that's right it's like the upside down every, every, everything else is there it's you get but, the, but remember the year we forgot the date the, the year ending Yep. the 2021 you know bill always puts on the cover yeah yes, you're ending in right. one year we it forgot that there. yeah because he was putting so many it. other pictures <laughs> yeah. that's right in the room for the day that's right so it's not the end of the world so it's missing that page yeah. the rest of the budget sheets all the budget sheets everything else you know the there. most important thing in that budget the warning or the warnings yeah that's right There's it's the there board warnings there and the town warning those are the two things by statute have to be there yeah. and you so, have to have those so many days before the yeah. I, I think that the rest of it's just information um wait do we also put something in the paper as a warning part of the warning we do put carrie puts the warning in the right. paper okay. yeah okay yeah. because i saw and then you can reference the the website or yeah. whatever okay yeah. missing page i don't think that we did the tally sheet i don't i think that's relatively new the and four budgets together and how it, yeah 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 i think that's that, relatively that's new. informational and it's it's can be critical but the the information for each budget's there so it's not like that's right you lost something i, I mean if the warning wasn't there yeah oh no the warning's there yeah. we'd be so, in trouble all right so just that skip the pages skip that number or the pages all numbered wrong relative to the table that's one through six spot on <laughs> The rest of them. <laughs> the rest of them off by one page. So there is a page seven, there, but it's it, not the it's, one. It's yeah, to be. it's just. It's missing. Yep. Yep. It's going to be all right. All right. Yep. 
So, so then I'm having them backwards. It'll, it'll, now, don't you feel better for having told us? I, <laughs> <laughs> I realize it, and I just, I just, I, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, and I, I, and I called Mary from Repro Graphics, and she's like, they're, they're printed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, we'll get it. it's okay. Okay. Next right. year we'll get it. We'll get it. Um, we'll make a different mistake next year. Believe it or not. I got an email from the town of Clarendon. They want to know if we would be willing to give them a rate to maintain that section of quarter line road. Like we offered them the first, the first deal, the first deal. They gave us the rate. Are we interested in all in having a conversation with them again? You know, I am so not interested in this at this point. <laughs> But I, I think I'll, that I'll defer to the highway. I was going to say we can throw together a highway committee meeting quick for next week and try to get this done. To sit down and go over, we got two things to uh, talk to Dave about: the um, generator stuff and the uh, project manager stuff. And we'll run this by him. Okay. I will not be here next week, but I will certainly get it set okay. up for you. Yeah. My, yeah. my my thought is they already set the rate. It was a very I, reasonable rate. We'll just throw them back the rate. I, I, I don't because the rate we pay Menden I think is better for the plowing. I don't know we pay Menden for plowing. Yeah, we I, gotta look that back up. But whatever. But I think at this point Dave is gonna say nope. Because what he told us is he's gonna put his guys to greater school. Yep. We're gonna rent yeah. a grader from windmill and they're gonna go down there and they're either gonna make it better or worse, and eventually they'll get it good. And the winter plant maintenance, I think he's He's got the winter maintenance covered. <coughs> they, you know, one of the trucks goes up, they plow it. He comes back, gets the other truck, puts sand on the other truck. They go up and sand it. Yeah. Okay. And and it's it's getting. I think done. they have a good plan right now. And and there is not a believe. I don't believe he's had a town resident complaint. No. And they're the only ones that matter. Right. That's and right. even the ones from Clarendon that were here were were saying it's been great this year. So. So. Uh, we'll run it by him. I'll I'll call I'll call Dave tomorrow and see if he can get together. Maybe we'll try to do it this week. It'll be available some morning at nine o'clock. That's not rain and snow. Oh, it'd be it'd be Friday morning. It'd be Friday. So yeah, What's it's not skin? looking like Friday. It's not looking like Friday. Friday. I gotta go dig up side of Route Four. I think. Okay. Um, Neat. When are you available? Uh, it'd probably be next week. Monday. Sure. What's Monday? Does twelve? Are you gone? No, the, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, I'll see. I think I'm available. I'll see if he's available at nine o'clock Monday morning. We'll get this done. And okay. We'll okay. Get those other items taken. All right. Anything else? The only one thing left. Mowing bids. All right. Item. What is it? Uh. 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 Okay. Am I missing that? <laughs> no, it's B. Them. As B. They're sealed bids. Okay. So. Could I do it? Look at that. We have one. Two, three, four, five. Wow. So if you could scribble, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay, the first one. Well, who knows? Who they don't, don't, don't put their name on. Open it. And do these all meet requirements all, all of being did, yes. here on time? Everything okay. was on time. Good. First one is from Intrinsic Property Services. Are they right over here? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for contacting us. Ba -da -ba -da. I've attached your proposal for your review based on the SOW you submitted. If you have any questions, okay. And he did it in sections. So uh, 181 Business Route 4 Town Hall, $1,490. Rutland Town Cemetery, $2,890. Two seventy two McKinley Avenue, two zero one zero, and Center Rutland Fire Station, two five two zero. That's one. Next, get the total on that bill. Yep. Eighty nine ten. Oh dear! Is this okay. for just lawn mowing for one summer? This would be. It's a two year. So Mary has the okay. Mary has the thing there, but it's a two. It's a two year contract. Okay. Is this per year or for the two years? I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. Supposed to be per year. 
Yeah, it should be it should be a per, a per year. We may have to just bundle these and give them to. I don't know who would take them. I'll take them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, this because this one I'm looking at. Um, yeah, Nicholas Capusta, and he's got starting with Rutland Town Municipal Hall. He's got three items: spring cleanup, sixty dollars; mowing trimming, fifty dollars each times fifteen mowings for seven fifty per year, for a total of eight ten per year. That's the town hall. Eight hundred and ten dollars. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Rutland Town Cemetery spring cleanup one twenty plus mowing trimmings a hundred dollars each for fifteen. So that's fifteen hundred total sixteen hundred twenty. Um, fire station. So he's a similar format for all of these. Fire station is eight hundred and ten for the year. That's business route four. McKinley Avenue Fire Station, also eight hundred and ten for the year. Be good next year because ain't gonna be none. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then earn his money information. Okay, you got those. Okay, yep. folks who are taking the numbers. Next is Central Vermont Property Management, Forty One Sunset Drive, Rutland. Okay, Rutland Town Hall. Oh, he does have two different years. Ten fifty for twenty twenty four, and eleven twenty five for twenty twenty five. Rutland Town Cemetery, seventeen hundred eighty dollars for the first year, eighteen hundred ninety five dollars for the next year. Center Rutland Fire Department. $1,040 for 2024, $1,130 for 2025. McKinley Avenue, $124 for 2024. <laughs> he got it. Yeah. And 1490 for 2025. Okay. okay. And, you know, the, those, he, he included the certificate of liability insurance, as did um, as as did Capusta, and did Intrinsic. I don't see it from Intrinsic. Okay, next. This is from Braden Clark, Clark Seasonal Seasonal Impact. Okay. And this is by the Mo, and there is a certificate of liability insurance. Um, Center Rutland Fire Station, $30 per Mo. And no, no annual. Okay. okay. McKinley Fire Station, $30 per Mo. Town Hall and Cemetery. $60 per month. And the last one. Rutland Town Lawn Mowing. It's like, is it a Gallopo? I'm not it's sure. It's like this is a Gallopo. Okay. okay. Um, so there's two different, he's, Oh, okay. Okay. So, so for the first year, for 2024, um, mowing town office, $15 per mow. Cemetery, $60 per mow. McKinley Fire Station, $35 per mow. And Center Rutland Fire Station, $35 per mow. And then spring cleanup. Town office, it's a set price. Town office and slash cemetery, $50. McKinley, NA, under construction. And Center Rutland Fire Station, $50. So, okay. Then for 2025, um, mowing, and this is the price per mow. Town office, $15. Cemetery, $60. McKinley Fire Station, $35. Center Rutland Fire Station, 35. 
And spring cleanup, set price. Town office and cemetery, $50. McKinley, $50. Center Rutland Fire Station, $50. All prices include light litter pickup. That's Gallipo. Do you have insurance? No insurance certificate with it. So what's your pleasure with these? Connor doing it now? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he took over the contract from Brad Keith. Brad Keith, yeah. You should yeah. add those all up. <laughs> uh well that's to your ability. Yeah, but with with the with the ones that don't specify how many times they're gonna do it, we gotta we gotta gotta find some common denominator. So it is so you use the fifth pair to what the other one said in terms of number of yeah. times. Fifteen times, right? Yeah. Fifteen for Capusta, fifteen for it's the first one. I don't like that because if they yes. don't have to do it 15 times, are we still paying? For it's that? like the call out thing yeah. for the yeah. road. So um, if they're well, doing, if we pay somebody a yearly contract, we're paying them whether they're marching or fighting anyway. Right. So and if we do it by the time, it might be a little better. Might, if the intrinsic summer, didn't say how many times they just gave a lump sum. Right. So I think said like 15, 15 times, right? Is that what? One did. some did one did. Let's see if there's another one. That's no, but just that one said the time. The other just yeah. seems like it's per year. Yeah, we have to. We have to add all the. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to do so. Okay. We we can deal with it next. I year. like the okay. ones that so it, are I identifying will, thirty pop thirty dollars per mo. Provide these to Bill. Have him do a spreadsheet and give Absolutely. us a comparison. And no problem. Also advise some charts and graphs. Missing. Maybe do do you want for, for Mary, graphs you want or pie the, charts? Yeah, you don't need to get you that want the building <laughs> committee to sketch some on the paper. I mean, it does make sense because. Well, I'm just saying, if we can schedule a meeting for next Monday morning at nine, we'll get through Dave, do the building, and make a recommendation. We'll need to know all the crossover points as to where, how many modes. Right. Before the <laughs> yeah, the old, yeah, yeah, we we did and chart with some lines and whether there's a. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could do the math mowers. pretty quick in my head. So, fifteen times fifteen is two and a quarter. Well, the, you know, anyways, we're, we're gonna and, and there's also advice on how we deal with the missing um, insurance certificate. Yep. Yeah, because that was part of the bid requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. That is okay. that is all I have. All right. So that takes care of. We can ask for the insurance the, certificate. No, what we have left? Oh, we have a personnel committee um, meeting yes. meeting we that we did, and we met. <laughs> um, so I will turn it over to <laughs> Matt Getty. <laughs> no action needed. I read that. We That's will. Great. We will have something for you to consider. We're working on it. Yeah. Any yeah. questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We met with uh, your consultant. We made some progress. We have another meeting scheduled. Hopefully soon we will have uniform revised timesheets for all departments to use. Get everybody on the same work week and I didn't see the police You did that's right. And we asked about that too. Okay. Yeah. I think that was just an omission. Uh and we are looking at a comp time policy, which we had some things to iron out. And then once we're done with it, we'll bring it to the rest of the board. Yeah. To consider. Yeah. Those are the highlights. And the, the comp time would allow some more flexibility for the way the police department operates. So that's why we wanted to take a look at that. A little bit of the highway reforms. Yeah, and we started talking about holidays and we got all confused. And So the, the holiday package, <laughs> isn't that up to us? Yes. yes. And, so and, and she started in, in the holiday part by setting out what they were that we'd already agreed on. So we're not going to change that, but it's how you count the hour, how you count the time, whether it's time and a half or straight time. And how do you get it as common? But, but it's not thing. necessarily on the we're number of holidays. Because holidays. Okay. I think not we have a very nice holiday to. package. I'm sorry. Employees. I think we pay people for a lot of holidays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in, of course you get paid, but, your job and highway's job 
mm-hmm. it snows right. or something oh, happens go. and you got to go. We had an extensive discussion about that. <laughs> I too. mean, it, it, it's it's nice on print and it looks good on paper, but as soon as winter shows up, it all goes right down the drain. So that's your personnel committee. Right. More work. to come. Anytime you're welcome. More to information. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have another one coming up. When did we set it for? Monday, the 12th. 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 Okay. Okay. So one item on your desk, and I think also circulated, is a... Do, do we need to do anything with the, the last page, the Stitzel thing? Is that any um, up for the, th- the bond bank? I think... You already signed it. We signed it in yeah, here. It in We're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. We had already agreed to hire them. So, right, yep. But I also wanted you to see how, how they were billing us. So, yep. Okay. Um, letter from Josh Terenzini, former state senator and Rutland Town chair. Yep. And this relates to Evergreen Cemetery, and he was writing to urge us to do our part. Um, Kurt has a report. I also have a brief report, which is this issue has been swirling around for probably two or three years. Anyway, I met with Howard Burgess to figure out where, how much of the cemetery was in the town. And the answer is zero. You're correct. Right. They carved Rutland city and Rutland town apart. They carefully put all of evergreen cemetery in the city, which means the municipal statute that says the city has, or a municipality has to step in and help with the cemetery if there are no funds to do so otherwise right. um, that replies to the city i did do you know as a private citizen i did a little met with the the mayor and one of the cemetery commissioners and this is not mayor dungeon it was mayor Allaire, and you know offered some suggestions talked once with bj about would they be willing to share records so that they could be posted online and maybe get a little um research revenue in for the emigrant cemetery and you folks are gonna nothing came of that um and i will say that there i at one point i even suggested go to the old families in town who have people buried there and ask them to make you know, one-time donation and build up your, your pot and do some of the things you want to do. I sent in a check, which was never cashed. So your report. Yeah. So I discussed it with BJ, the other cemetery commissioner. And uh, obviously the, as a cemetery commission, we want nothing to do with evergreen cemetery. That's not in our town. Um, and the, the state, the state has statutes saying that if a cemetery devo- dissolves, um, you know, the municipality that it presides within is going to have to, um, can't remember the exact wording, but it's provide basic maintenance, yeah. uh, make sure, you know, there's uh, no brush over the headstones, make sure that the mowing's done at a certain rate. Um, there's some wording to that. Um, so it's not going to be grown up into a jungle. Yeah. And you know, abandoned. It, it will have to be maintained and the city is going to have to do it. So, um, I guess that's the problem. no, they're just out of money. Well, they've also indicated that they were close to running out of money, but now this has been about, they're in the third year, yeah. at least that I've heard about. So as a, just something to throw out there, I'm not doing, but as a, goodwill gesture from the town it won't be on this budget but like for another budget a sum of money as a um, appropriation from the town and let the voters in the town decide if they want to would come up with a number to contribute to the um, maintenance and upkeep of that cemetery and that's what i was thinking when this came out and and what you know there's Two or three thousand voters in the town. Obviously, everybody's probably got somebody there they know that they would like to see that uh, maintained. Um, it appears that that was it's the date sounds like that was started right around the Civil War. So there's some history there, um, and I think that that would be a good way to go. I mean, I don't know how much we want to. We just come up with a number, figure out something, and and put it in next year's appropriations. And see if the voters vote for it. And if they want to do it, and that would be how we as a town, I mean, we have no obligation, state statute, but because of what it is and its 
heritage to the area and it's part of the area i think that it would be nice on the town's part to to contribute something um i mean i i think the city would do a pretty good job maintaining it it would it's it would be a whack to them but there's a cemetery on uh west street there by uh well across from the old hugh duffy next to the old right. farmer's market and that's well maintained and right. i mean i just i'm doing it as a community gesture and i think yeah. that that would be something i'd like to you know and i don't know how does a select board put a appropriation on the ballot do we I just, don't know that's a good question so we've got a year to think about it. we can't do anything this year we vote to we vote to put on our you know, would we make other ones, but for an appropriation, I don't know if we have to do anything different. Yeah, we have a social service appropriation policy. We do. And it usually involves getting a bunch of signatures. Yeah. yeah. We'd have to get it. Even the board, if the board wanted to put it on. It, it, yeah. it, it, it talks about it from the viewpoint of if they wanted to do it, they make it, they get the petition and bring it into yeah. us to go on the ballot. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking it'd be something from the town as a goodwill gesture. Toward the main, you know, I I think we're able to. I just don't. I haven't researched it, but we got a little we, time. We, we we've got a we got, a we got about eleven and a half months. You put the scholarships on there, so those aren't voter. That's true. Sponsored, so that's yeah. true. Yeah, it is going to be a lot more of a chore than West Street, though. That's a big piece that's of property. Big. There's it's probably how big nice. would you say that is? Do you know how many acres? That's a big I can't piece. remember. I looked at the parcel like <laughs> 15, 20. Uh, I bet you it's more than that. It yeah. goes way up there. It, but, yeah, it goes almost all the way to the back of like um, when you're. Uh, uh, it, it abuts the fire district property. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It yeah. goes way it's, out there because I know there's a bunch of gravestones way down in the back corner. And they were all lined up, and every spring, this whole school, eight grades, march across the road. The uh, state police would stop traffic, and we'd go out there, and they do a we do a program for those graves that they're. I don't know how I was pretty young, so I don't know too much. And I've tried to find it a couple of times when I've attended funerals here. And I think I did find where they were. Yeah, are those the poor man graves? There's there's over two the rows back. of them way, way down in that back. Corner. Yeah, they're over on that back, like Some, west, northwest corner somewhere. I, I think those are like the, uh, but we went to the every poor man's graves. Yeah. Okay. For seven years, this whole school went over there and did that for every oh. Memorial Day. Harold's buried with the family way over there. I wonder if he knew it was in the city. <laughs> it's a little late now. <laughs> yeah. I, it was still trans, a, transplant him. It was still the town. When his family got here. But anyway, that would be my suggestion if we go that route. Okay. And, All right. So, you know, kind of, we can talk about a sum what we think is appropriate. Um, what would really be nice to know is what their yeah. annual operating costs kind of are, and that would help us determine what we wanted to contribute. I can get you that information because the current president of the board is my law partner. So. Yes, Paul is still. <laughs> you know, I mean, it would help. It. And, I, and I think it's a nice gesture. Um, hey, tell her if she finds my check, please don't cash it. Don't cash it now. Yeah, because it's over a year old. So but, yeah. I can't imagine. what well, She's not the treasurer, well, so I don't know what yeah. happened there. Well, that's but. the thing that kind of, yeah, that's the odd part about that. Yeah. I, I hope that when the when this all you know that there was no misappropriation well, of funds that caused this problem because the, that uh, will be really sad they probably should you know see an audit yeah. yeah i i think that would probably be wise not that there's any no but no, i'm doing but i just think yeah, it's yeah. I mean, getting you know a handle on the finances yeah. i think yeah. would be important yeah. okay so we have two more things left one is the business personal property appraisal services and then if we need any other reason in executive session and we wanted to go into executive session to talk about that business personal property contract i don't think we have any other requests because we did the deliberative session on dyer road out in the open right so i okay. move to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing the Business personal property service agreement for the town of Rutland. Is there a second? Okay. Contract negotiations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank All you. in favor of the motion, please say. Oh, and including Marsha Chaffee and Marie yeah, Fagnett, yeah, our yeah, two yeah. listers. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Could we um, have a two minute recess? I think that's excellent. So all in favor of the motion, please say aye. All right. <laughs> and we'll take a two minute recess before we okay. go to the board meeting. Sometime. Okay. Now it's recording. <laughs> all right. So we're out of executive session. At nine sixteen, is there a motion? 
Uh, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, moved and seconded. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Bye. Oh, no. Okay, thank you.